This conference will now be recorded. Good evening. I would like to open the Harwich Board of Selectmen's meeting for January 25, 2021. I will uh, start with the roll call. Uh, Don? Aye. Here. Michael? Here. Steve? Here. Uh, Ed, I don't see you yet, but uh, presumably Ed will join us shortly and an eye for me. Uh, with that, I ask you to join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. You have a flag, Joe Handy? I do. And that's not the one I want to show. There we there go. We go. Uh, please join me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, invisible, with liberty, justice for all. Thank you. It's very hard to sync that on uh, on Zoom. Uh, before we move to uh, the uh, next items. I asked Don to uh, make a uh, statement for me and for us. Don? Mr. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, we take note tonight of the passing of yet another treasured member of the Harwich community, Senna Fernandez. She was a hometown product and attended Harwich School. Amongst her many accomplishments, she was a founding member of the Harwich Housing Authority and was well known to all those who visited our then new community center in the late 90s as its receptionist. But I will always remember her as the embodiment of Harwich and Cape Verdean values. Nothing pleased her more than the success of her children. She would be missed by all whose lives she touched. And with that, I ask you to please join me in a moment of silence uh, in her honor. Thank you. Thank you, Don. Thanks for that. She was a mainstay, certainly in Harwich for a long time, and as a community center. Uh, for the record, uh, I note that Ed McManus has joined us. Uh, Joe, let me uh, turn the agenda over to you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. So, uh, this is, um, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, the board's dedicated meeting for all things to deal with wastewater. Uh, and we're joined this evening uh, by our colleagues in government, um, the uh, water wastewater superintendent, Dan Pelletier, uh, finance director, Carol Coppola, and the uh, town engineer, Griffin Ryder. And uh, the three of them and I have been working on um, wastewater issues in depthly for, for about the last two and a half months in anticipation of the meeting that occurred on December 8th. Um, which, as you recall, was a more of a technical overview. So this evening, Mr. Chairman, based on the direction from the board, we're prepared this evening uh, to go over uh, first a review of the comprehensive wastewater management plan. Uh, just give a historical overview of that. Uh, a brief update on where we stand on the uh, CWMP's phase two, constructions one and two, which impact upon uh, East Harwich and Pleasant Bay. Uh, then a discussion and a potential vote regarding phase two uh, for a third construction contract uh, also for that area of town. Then we're going to progress and talk about the DHY working group efforts and that will lead into a discussion by the board regarding the proposed agreement uh, establishing the DHY Clean Waters Community Partnership. And then we have some uh, financial summaries and schedules that uh, our finance director has put together that we can review. And then last, but certainly by no means least, um, staff would be looking for a discussion from the board on next steps and what directions you'd like us to take. Um, Mr. Chairman, as you know, I would also indicate that we're joined this evening um, by several folks, but also by uh, David Young from CDM Smith. Uh, and David may perhaps be the best person to speak about some of the past um, actions and the um, historical overview uh, generally, or take questions on the historical overview. So at this point, Mr. Chairman, I'll turn it back to you and um, we have staff prepared to kick off the discussion. Uh, thank you, Joe. I thought I would start with uh, some historical perspective. This 
Uh, anytime a project goes on this long, it's easy to forget uh, how we started it and what some of our steps were. Uh, a lot have gone on, so I'm just going to hit a few of the, what I think are highlights in, in a quick review. Uh, just a note, Harvest established its first water quality monitoring program in the early 2000s, utilizing town staff and citizen volunteers. In 2007, a wastewater committee was established and CDM Smith hired as technical consultant. Committee members and town staff with resident input defined water quality issues to provide input into the Massachusetts Estuaries Project or MEP, which is the basis of the comprehensive wastewater management plan. Uh, that's a key point because I guess confused a lot. Uh, the data modeling and uh, all the basically all the items we've talked about is the basis with the MEP. CDM Smith was then asked to take that and bring it into reality. The MEP was funded by the state to collect data, utilizing environmental models along with scientific literature to address nitrogen loading issues as efficiently and effectively as possible. It's also important to note that uh, prior to the MEP, when we first uh, started in the early 2000s of noting our water problems, the inclination was to state that we'd have to sewer everything. With the MEP uh, help from the state funds, uh, we immediately were able to drop that to about 50% of the residents needing to have wastewater treatment of some kind. Let me note that uh, we initially had concern that sewering, uh, that sewering the wastewater to meet water quality regulations uh, requirements would encourage unreasonable growth. It was agreed that potential growth should be determined by Harwich residents as voiced through resident input, zoning, the planning board, the board selectmen, and ultimately future town meeting action. The CWMP was a, established as a framework to su support existing needs and future wisdom vision of Harwich, was to not make these decisions or those decisions. Let me restate that. The CWMP is not a zoning or uh, document. It's, it's a wastewater, it's a water uh, database and modeling to help do whatever the town wants. And it goes back then to zoning and town residents. Let me just uh, summarize, uh, the MEP uh, does have a, a portion of that that has a build out that we've been asked about, I you know I've been asked about several times. With the exception of Pleasant Bay, uh, the build out figures that, that we see in our plan is based on current uh, zoning. And by current, I mean that zoning that was in place in, in 2000, uh, approximately 2005, uh, when this plan was, was developed. The exception to that is Pleasant Bay, in which in addition to the current zoning, uh, additional residence commercial uses were added to that because at the time we were considering, we being a town, uh, was considering the development of an East Harwich commercial village. That's been delayed, so we can always go back and recheck those numbers. But the build out, again, is a comparison of existing uh, flow and what, would, what we could do with current zoning. As some doubt points, I'm going back and forth. The logical extension of this statement is the CWMP is a living document which will be modified during this 40 year life. The committee filed a draft CWMP with the Massachusetts, the MEPA office, Mass Department of Environmental Protection and the Cape Cod Commission. Thomas received the no state regulate, regulators as well as the local citizens Comments were addressed and the final CWMP was approved in May of 2016. Again, I state this just to show the work that's gone into this. In, years, in the years 2010 to 2014, the Conservation Law Foundation brought several suits against the environmental, U.S. Environmental Protection Agency and therefore against the Mass Department of Environmental Protection 
and the Cape Cod Commission. These complaints were that the Cape Cod towns were not addressing water quality issues, namely reduction of the nitrogen load, according to the MVP assessment of what is required to improve and sustain water quality. These complaints were stayed in 2010. The suit was not settled, the, the meaningful word here is stayed, on the condition that the 208 plan, including harvest CWMP actions to reduce nitrogen were met. Larry, could you explain for the public's benefit what the 208 plan is? The, uh, excuse me. I would like to just get away from jargon tonight so that the public can clearly understand what we're saying. The, the 208, 208 plan was developed by the uh, Cape Cod Commission in discussions with DEP and the uh, EPA as a framework for us to uh, develop our, uh, each town to develop a CWMP. And so it, it uh, lists those items that are necessary, including that we have uh, the MEP modeling, we have uh, load reduction steps, we have uh, existed a, a framework for showing that we're moving forward and we're reporting to the county once a, once a year on our uh, compliance with the so-called 208. It does not tell each town what to do, how to meet these requirements. It just says it has to be done and we have to meet a uh, timeline. Thank you for that, Don, because there's always some confusion that the 208 in some way directs, us, directs the towns what to do. It does not. It just says we have to uh, meet our nitrogen reduction goals. Does that help? Yeah, just, I mean, from my background with the federal government, everything gets obscured by acronyms and letters. I just want to be clear on what the heck we're talking Very about. Very true. The uh, troubling part is, uh, not you, Don, but the troubling part overall is the CLF has uh, continually expressed its concerns that the towns are not moving fast enough. At least once a year, they write threatening letters that if we don't move, they will uh, go back to the courts. Uh, that's one of the reasons I, I'm proud of what we've done because we've taken positive steps to uh, move forward. After the adoption of CWMP, and some of this will, will be discussed further tonight, our first action was to replace the culverts of, at uh, Muddy Creek with a bridge that uh, at least data so far shows uh, the flushing has been very successful in helping to reduce the nitrogen load. We purchased capacity at the, char at the Chatham uh, Waste uh, Treatment Plant uh, to save money on building our own plant for East Harwich. And we've approved in there in the midst of construction of uh, at least 400 of the six homes of, uh, of phase two in East Harwich. We're now looking at, we'll discuss later, and I think I'll stop there at the uh, at possibly uh, joining uh, Dennis and Yarmouth with a regional plant in the West Harwich for us. So additionally, the drive is to uh, meet our uh, CWMP regulatory requirements uh, at a reduced cost. Just one final note is, I can't emphasize uh, enough and it'll be brought up tonight. This is a living document and we're always collecting data the, uh, and uh, revising that as we go forward. Uh, and I know with Dan will speak to you, there's hopeful signs that we may be able to meet our East Harwich uh, requirements, for instance, by sewering uh, fewer homes. But we have that data going forward. So I, I'll stop there. What I want to do is just give you a brief sketch of the all the people involved in the timeline as we uh, embark on this uh, need to clean our waters. Uh, Joe, that's mine unless you have uh, questions or comments about my brief history. Uh, Mr. Sorry. Chairman, I believe we did get a request for uh, folks to be heard under this topic. Okay. Uh, uh, Sandy and Claire, please. Hello. Hi, thank you. Hi. I'm Clara McClarty, live in East Harwich. Um, I feel compelled to speak about my growing concerns as a self-appointed voice for Harwich residents who have not been heard throughout this um, management plan process. As I educated myself about wastewater, 
I found many details, um, such as the 41% build out for East Harwich that alarm me, and I would like them to be more widely known and understood. I learned about a citizens advisory committee and an East Harwich Neighborhood Association who did try to bring forward these facts about costs associated with projected new construction and zoning changes, but were ignored and suppressed. The letter from them, which I have shared via email, was sent to selectmen back in 2013, and no changes were made in the plan. I would like to read a relevant passage from that letter on page two. It refers to that 208 plan from the Cape Cod Commission in, in the part called Guidance for Local Wastewater Management Plans. Um, the guidance instructs towns in the earliest stages of planning to estimate the cost based on current zoning and to estimate the cost of wastewater treatment for new growth. Later stages of planning should not begin until the town has addressed the potential costs of future growth, including presentation at public meetings, and concluded that the setting of the proposed growth flows is consistent with the community's willingness to expend capital for future growth needs. Now, Um, the reason that Cape Cod Commission and the state have these type of guidelines, and they are also reiterated elsewhere, is because uh, the, the process and the community involvement is really needed. The impact of this plan will be profound. It is to ensure that the interests of a small group are not favored, that the community has a voice in these choices, which will set our future course and impact future generations. If it was a matter that could simply be decided by calculating costs, there wouldn't, it wouldn't be such a big deal, it would be easy. But it really is about values, not just money or data. The conversation about how much new development we wanna plan on goes beyond water flows, per capita costs, interest rates, and all the rest. There are so many important quality of life considerations that cannot be quantified. If you take a two acre parcel of land and you look at its value as something you can quantify with dollar amounts, it might be logical to say, well, this land generates no tax revenue. We need to fund our fire station, our school, our sewer system. If a big fancy house is built, we'll get more tax income. Ooh, if two or four big houses could be squeezed in, boy, we'll really grow our tax base. It is possible to generate tax revenue that way and it is possible to grow a town that way. For me, if you said to me, Clara, Sandy, great news, your home is now worth $1 million. Here's your tax bill. Oh, you can't afford it. Your kids can't afford to live in our community. Your neighbors all moved away to Maine. Oh, don't worry. You can sell your home for 1 million and make a huge profit. Isn't that wonderful? No. It would not be wonderful to me. I planted hickory nut trees and I designed a bee friendly perennial food producing garden. I hauled organic matter to carefully build the soil here. I fed the worms. I raised children to respect the land and to see themselves as part of the ecosystem. I do not value my land the same way real estate markets value it. They don't reflect my interests in my home and property. This decision about developing East Harwich ought to reflect the values of our community more than dollars and cents. We want to have children, grandchildren, and grandparents. We want to have birds from hawks to orioles to osprey. We want excellent clean water and pristine beaches. We want a Cape Cod culture. We want Cape Cod architecture. We want small streets. We want scraggly lawns. We want the benefits of wildlife and open space. We care if certain long-tongued bumblebees who are native here go extinct on our watch due to habitat loss. That matters to us. Your constituency voted for sewers on the assumption that though expensive, it was the right thing to do environmentally. People did not vote to turn East Harwich into a parking lot or a 40B frenzy. They were misled. This meeting tonight, I gather, is intended to be a community forum wastewater discussion. I have been talking with people about these concerns for weeks, and I've noticed that many people feel the whole thing's over their heads, so they avoid engaging. These people have opinions, but they feel unsure of speaking up. 
To truly have input, you must invite it by being accessible. Like Don said, avoiding acronyms, giving straight answers. That has not happened in the past. CDM Smith ran these public outreach programs. We all know that if you put up a graph on the projector that shows a bunch of numbers and lines, a sneaky person can manipulate that graph to say what they want it to show. I might feel suspicious, but not have a clue how to double check the data, the costs, and the figures. I do know enough now to regard all of our management plan with suspicion. I know that build out assumptions were underlying every calculation, but the numbers were stated again and again to just be reflecting the estuary product data, estuary project data. I know that land use controls, although they are inexpensive and environmentally effective, were not used toward reaching our nitrogen limit goals. I know that some data that was used was just sloppily inaccurate. I know that options like IA and composting were given a totally insincere evaluation. I have confirmed these things with professionals and scientists. If you insist on plowing ahead without revisiting this shabby plan, I will vote no on all of it. It will be no on DHY, no on every budget item. I will do my best to get the word out to others about what is happening. We need to have admission that this comprehensive wastewater management plan wasn't done properly, that some people in town sneaked their own little pet projects into the design, that things were never evaluated thoroughly from all angles, and the public was not engaged in the process meaningfully. We need to start over and consider the community and the environment in our design this time. I have to share a little quote from the great George MacDonald. It is one of the poorest of human weaknesses that a man would be ashamed of saying he has done wrong instead of so ashamed of having done wrong that he cannot rest till he has said so. For the shame cleaves fast until the confession removes it. Thank you. Uh, thank you for those comments. Uh, I would uh, like to uh, uh, say um, state my piece. Um, so in the introduction, um, I noticed that for the first time, um, Pleasant Bay was treated separately than the rest of the town and that current zoning, um, we keep hearing that current zoning won't be affected. Uh, but tonight, just tonight, we hear that, uh, that didn't apply to Pleasant Bay. This is the first time I've heard that. And I've been following this for two years. If you look to the Board of Health website under sewer information in the Q&A format, it says, what if I have two bedroom house? Now I can add bedrooms once I connect to the sewer system. Uh, can I add bedrooms once I connect to the sewer system? And the answer from the Board of Health, again, all of the properties connecting to the sewer in phase two are located in a water recharge area. The zone two rule of one bedroom per 10,000 square feet of property will not change Connecting to the sewer will not allow for increases beyond what the current zoning and Title V regulations allow. The sewer system is designed for a maximum number of gallons per day to be piped to the treatment plant in Chatham. This number is based on current zoning and build-out parameters, flow neutral. No plans are in place to allow for increased density at this time. We're talking about Pleasant Bay for those people that are not familiar with Phase Two terminology. Now, if we contrast that with CWMP page 13-10, and I have to read this, I wish I didn't have to, but it's important to the discussion. In the East Harwich Village Center, updates were made to the MEP build out assumptions. The town is evaluating options to increase development in this area and several options remain under consideration. After discussions with local boards, committees and town staff, it was decided for planning purposes to include 200 new <coughs> residential units and 250,000 square feet of new commercial development above the existing MEP build-out estimates. The MEP build-out estimates are the results of meetings with the town planning staff that took place in 2006. The MEP staff developed the build-out estimates for the Pleasant Bay watershed based on existing zoning, keyword, and the Harwich Planning Department's understanding of potential future development. The MEP report retailing those uh, detailing those estimates was then issued in 2006. Then in 2011, the town local comprehensive plan was completed and approved by the town. 
in the 2011 local comprehensive plan, the uh, East Harwich um, Village Center was specifically targeted for zoning revisions. I'll say that again, specifically targeted for zoning revisions. That would result in updated build out projections not found in the 2006 MEP report. The approval of the local comprehensive plan prompted the development of new build out scenarios detailing the updated flows in the East Harwich Village Center. Um, I'm just gonna skip because this is, people are losing it, but it, uh, th what this accounts, uh, if we skip down a little bit, it says, in addition to the build out flows developed in the 2006 MEP report, the additional build out flow allowance of 55,000 gallons per day is considered appropriate for the planning purposes. So in simple terms for everybody to understand, the current zoning according to the CWMP or the town plan, if you will, is 15% growth. That would be current zoning. The ambitious zoning that has been uh, baked into this pie is an additional 26%. We're talking 41% or 50, uh, the 26% is equal to the 55,000 gallons per day or 200 homes plus 250,000 square feet of commercial space. Now we have to ask, what's the cost of this growth? You would think these answers would be readily available, but they're not. So there was an open letter titled critical letter that I sent out to the board of selectmen. This was compiled by the East Harwich Community Association, Harwich Conservation Trust, Association to Preserve Cape Cod, Cape Cod Business Roundtable and Friends of Pleasant Bay. This is what they found back in 2013. The wastewater cost impact of this new development in East Harwich is $20 billion. This is supported by information included in the DCWMP. That was the draft edition. The CWMP states that the overall cost of this plan could be reduced by $50 million provided half of projected town wide growth does not occur and stormwater and fertilizer controls are put in place. By the way, fertilizer uh, um, laws were just enacted by the uh, Board of Health and I applaud their work, but it was 10 years too late in my opinion. Therefore, we are requesting that the town of Harwich, back to the letter, sorry, uh, the town of Harwich and its consultants be asked to provide the following analysis a sensitivity analysis that projects wastewater flows and nitrogen loads from commercial and residential, residential growth in East Harwich based on different growth assumptions, including growth at the level of build out in the village center and remainder of the watershed under current zone, growth in the village center that is beyond build out at current zoning without offset to that growth. And finally, the one I like the best, growth under land use control that reduces the amount of future commercial and residential growth below existing zoning for East Harwich. In summary, we need to understand future growth better. These, the numbers, as my wife has said, have been shoddy. The CWMP plan is not a good plan. And if you're building a house on a, a, a crummy foundation, everything else is gonna be unsupported. So we need to take a closer look at this with a good foundation. We cannot evaluate DHY. You know, I've asked questions of, of different members of the, of the town leadership. You know, what if we, um, you know, we wanna send 300,000 gallons per day to DHY. What if we had sent that to Chatham and we had dealt uh, with East Harwich, which, did, which didn't need this kind of growth with IA systems? None of these scenarios can be properly evaluated. Nobody can give me clear answers on these types of okay. questions. As the letter stated, none of these uh, questions have been properly answered. In order to properly evaluate going forward, we've got to take a hard look at the CWMP. Thank you, gentlemen, for um, taking the time to listen to me. Okay. Any other one? Anyone else have a comment, question? Uh, yes. Joe, with that, I'll turn it back. I'll turn it back to you. Can, how do we uh, get in line? Sorry. Pardon? Can can you hear me okay? Uh, who's speaking? Oh, Judith. hi, this is Judith Underwood. Uh, hi, Judith. Can I just make very brief remarks? You may. Okay, so my name is Judith Underwood. I live in Harvard Center. I'm also um, one of the water commissioners. 
and um, our, the water commissioners, the wastewater and water commissioners, we do not deal with policy. And I am absolutely not speaking tonight on behalf of the water wastewater department. I'm speaking as an individual. I'm speaking from somebody that actually has a company that deals with blue technology, clean water and clean oceans. Um, I just, for clarity for the general public, um, Chairman, you did a really nice job of explaining the 208, but I just want to do a little bit further. 208 actually refers to a piece of the EPA law that went into effect during the Nixon administration. And in that, those lines, it talks about clean water and um, finding pollution from single source. Um, in other words, if you were a factory and you were on the, for example, the Charles River and you had a pipe going into the river, um, that's what the, the EPA in that law was trying to control. At that time, it really was not thinking about septic systems. So fast forward 40 years, um, here on Cape Cod, we are 85 to 90% septic system. And because of that, as every, we all know, there's too much nitrogen and phosphorus because the septic systems, although they do a great job with biologics, they just can't keep the nitrogen and phosphorus in. Um, so what the CLA did was they created a lawsuit and they focused on Cape Cod because it's high value property. And they didn't, for example, focus on Western Mass that is also septic system. So that's a good thing because what they were trying to do and they're still trying to do long term is to first of all, save the water, our drinking water in our coastal estuaries and um, all the, the, the fish and the um, aquaculture. But they're also trying to make a change in that law so that the pollution, our human pollution in the form of nitrogen and phosphorus will also be taken into account into that law. And the way to mediate that was to come up with the 208 plan, which either um, puts towns into putting in formalized sewer systems, traditional sewer systems, or going to more um, innovative systems, similar, for example, what they have at the Harwich Elementary School. Um, and the, the reason why they don't do that with every household is because the cost is prohibitive right now on the technologies of taking nitrogen and phosphorus um, out of a, a D-box before it goes out into the septic, into the, um, the leaching field. In other words, there's no way to stop that from happening. Um, so that's one issue uh, I wanted to bring up just so that folks understand that. But I also want to say back in 2014 and 2015, when I was um, working on the environmental tech program at the community college, I twice came before the committee and asked them if they would look at different alternative systems because there were testing sites that were going on by the county out at the base. They were testing all different systems down in Long Island that whose pollution was 10 years ahead of us, right? 10 years much stronger. And there was a lot of innovation going on. And um, the engineer for CDM Smith just dismissed it and said, no, this is not going into our report because it doesn't make any sense at all. And um, so I was always concerned about that. It's one of the reasons I actually ran to um, serve <coughs> with the water department. Um, and I love our water department. They do like a phenomenal job. Um, so I'm concerned about that. I'm concerned about the what happened at the state level with making this um, three town uh, political organization that went through very, very fast. And um, I'm also very concerned that uh, there are not right now, you know, five years later, these technologies have been more developed. They're actually 
in parts of Europe and East Asia, they actually are doing different models for entire cities are using alternative systems. Um, and I think it behooves us, particularly given sea level rise and what it's doing financially to the community to at least take a pause and to spend a little time to review these things before we commit to creating a sewer system that's very expensive. And I know, I don't think that my kids will be able to afford here. I think very often about moving up to Maine. I, I don't want, I never wanted to live in suburbia. And I think the first speaker, um, she addressed a lot of really good issues that don't have to do with the environment and the engineering, but they really have to do with the long-term growth in this town. And, and so you're weighing different things. It's not just an issue of cleaning up the environment. It's, it's you're really dealing with an issue of growth. And one of the reasons I voted for the, the first piece of the sewering to go in was because we were promised at town meeting that those, um, those regulations for the town that were in place at the time of the vote would remain in place, irregardless of what a board of selectmen voted for in the future. And I, and I hope that, that we all stick with that. Thank you. Thank you, Judith. Other uh, comments, questions? Larry, just, just yeah. a thought, this is Don. Uh, this has absolutely no substance to it. I'm just talking about form again. We got, we destroyed a conversation about a year ago by not being clear about what we were talking about. As we move forward, when we're discussing this, please make it clear about whether you're talking about the a Harwich phase one versus what would be a DHY phase one, they're not the same. Uh, good point. And I think uh, when we get to Dan and Griffin's presentations, they're very carefully uh, separating those out, Don, but that's a good reminder. But just the words phase one, phase two don't mean anything unless you can tether them to which, which construct you're talking about. And, and, right. In my discussion, I was talking about the Harwich phase one in, in, over here in East Harwich. A good point. Uh, Joe, I'll turn it back to you then to move on with the agenda. Larry, if I may. Michael. Thank you. Just a clarification. Um, I, I think we should, actually a question first. Has anyone from the town, from the Board of Selectmen, administration, um, Griffin or Dan been in touch with Clara to talk about some of her concerns? The emails started coming in uh, about 30 days ago, and I have already apologized to them once, and I will again tonight because I've been traveling extensively and I haven't had time to dive into this. But Larry, I also sent you and, and the uh, town administrator an email asking if something was going to be um, done, and you replied with that you had a response typed out and you hadn't sent it yet. So I guess my question is, has anyone gotten back to um, them about their concerns? I have. I didn't. Have, I, I, I haven't spoken uh, to uh, the board. Let me uh, let me just comment. I did. I uh, I'm trying to uh, sort out the response, to Sandy, to you and Claire, because a lot of what you're concerned with, and I share your concerns, by the way, uh, as I tried to say in the beginning, was more of how the town sees itself growing regarding zoning and uh, growth areas. Uh, not directly related to the CWMP, which is intended not to make those decisions, but to enforce whatever the town uh, decides. And there's some of those cross over. And so I, uh, I'll send that uh, more general. I didn't get into some of the uh, specifics that you've uh, that you mentioned. Uh, Dan, I think you had some discussions. Yeah, I I had reached out to um, McClarty's. I think it was actually prior to when they actually sent the letter and, and have spent um, a fair amount of time between then and now uh, discussing all these various things with them. Dan's been very helpful, but, uh, but the concerns remain. And some of the things were um, other specifics in our letter, like about the 10 year time of travel, our whole sewer plan is uh, designed in such a way that none of the benefits would reach the Bay until after 10 years from the time we hook up. 
and other things like that seem to be just very ineffective approach if it's an environmentally motivated, um, you know. Let, let, let me uh, respectfully suggest that you uh, go back and reread the time of travel document because that means that uh, the part closest to the uh, estuary will get there right away. It'll take 10 years uh, to get it all there. And so I think maybe I just ask you to go back and review that. No, that, that's not uh, correct. I, I, I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman. That's not I, correct. I, I, if I may, I, 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 I just, I just would like to go. I'll go back and review it too. But I'd like to go back and have you review that. If I can finish, Larry. Michael, yes. Thank you. Um, so, I think, I think their questions warrant, and, and I know I mentioned this in the email, but we have a, a, a very. Uh, or a fairly highly paid consultant, as well as uh, town staff that can address some of this. Um, as far as the zoning goes, I want to tell everyone else that's on here that they, that in order to change zoning in East Harwich, it will take a two thirds town meeting vote. So it's not going to automatically uh, change zoning because there was some build out factored into the CWMP. Uh, and, and lastly, Larry, I appreciate your comment about it being a living document. Uh, it is a living document and, and I appreciate um, their input on this and I appreciate the questions because I have a lot of the same questions at this point. And, and as we navigate forward and we're looking at voting um, contracts or partnerships with other town tonight, um, you know, going 30 days or whatever it's been since the first email without a response and again, from our, and, and thank you, Dan, for, for your time with them. Um, without a response from the board, I think it's gonna backfire on anything future that we do. And I will tell you from everybody that I spoke to today, there's a, there's a huge lack of trust in this board of selectmen. And, and there was some mistakes made in, in East Harwich um, to the tune of over $10 million that, we've, that we've, we've touched on. We haven't apologized for it. And, and, as, and again, as we navigate forward, I, I, you know, I'm getting the sense, uh, actually I won't say that, but you know, we're talking about a new partnership before we finish um, the one that, the, the deal that we already signed on for. And to quote Conservation Law Foundations, um, the head lawyer involved in this prior to the stay at the uh, 208 meeting in uh, Hyannis, that he's barely on board. And I would point to, um, Boston Harbor cleanup and look at what they did. So the Board of Selectmen didn't intentionally put a CWMP together to spend taxpayers' money. There was some thought put into this and, and it is a, uh, and has always been a living document that can change. And I would ask um, Dan Pelletier if we could do a little bit of research on some of the alternative technologies that Clara has spoke about, as well as um, Judith Underwood because it, it, if, from my reading, none of them have been approved by the DEP yet. Now, maybe they're on their way to getting approved, but we also have to satisfy DEP in, in our decisions. And, and I don't think suing the whole town is our answer. And I hope that we continuously look at alternative technologies, but they have to make sense. And the Conservation Law Foundation has said it, they're not going away. And they didn't go away in Boston. And I believe Boston spent equal to what they spent on, on cleaning up Boston Harbor on legal fees. And that's something that me as a taxpayer would like to avoid. Larry? Uh, sure. Thank you, Michael. I need to uh, make a Don, comment about one thing that Michael brought up because I would like Michael to have been right, but the zoning in East Harwich has never been the limiting factor on what we can build. Anybody who's familiar, I mean, I was on the planning board for this. It was designated a state drinking water resource protection district. That actually has been hold, holding back the growth, not the zoning. The zoning actually allows for more than the drinking water resource protection district would allow. I, my concern is that somebody someday is going to sue their way into doing more because we've got pipes in the ground. So don't rest put all your eggs in the zoning basket the, the, there doesn't need to be any zoning for more building and 40 you, B, me, don't need zoning for 40 b's to come in yeah let me uh michael just to uh, follow up one point that you made that i think is important one is that any uh sewering plan uh 
it's not a one size fits all. We're certainly spending a lot more time, uh, and I think it's much more relevant to talk about, let me say it differently. Uh, sewering is, has a lot of advantages where it's, uh, uh, where it's uh, densely populated, more densely populated, not at all in the more rural areas. And so we need to be careful to look at uh, what makes sense to uh, get the job done, save money, protect the environment. No one's, uh, it'd be a big mistake to say any plan is relying on one over the other. Other uh, comments? Uh, thank you. Let's uh, move on then, Joel, to the next uh, part of the agenda. Agenda. I'll turn it right back to uh, to Dan um, to navigate us through the next steps. I'll take this over here. Um, so, so you guys have heard uh, over the past year and a half, um, many of you, many of you folks have heard me talk about construction contracts one and two. So, I've been working um, me, the town engineer with Dan, the wastewater superintendent and DPW and other town staff to, as well as our, our consultant resident engineer to manage the construction of, of contract one and contract two. Now these, when I, when I reference phase two, we're talking about the CWMP um, and not DHY for this, for, for this area. So contract one, um, contract one was awarded to Robert P. Hour. That project started um, in, in July. Well, I guess it started in about August of 2019, but I think the contract was signed at the end of June, uh, beginning of July. Um, we are looking for a substantial completion as a two year project. So substantial completion will be, will be done in July of 2021. We are on track. Uh, the contract value is about 11.6 million um, and it's about 80% complete. Um, I think most folks in East Harwich saw the disruption with, with roadways over over the last year or so. Um, I'd like to report with, with contract one, all the pipe is essentially in the ground. Um, the, the last bit of work that needs to be done is are associated primarily with pump stations. Uh, there's two pump stations in contract one, as well as two in contract two. So a, as we move into the spring months, um, contract one will be wrapping up with the completion of, of the pump stations that are associated with, with, with contract one. There's one on Route 137, and then there's one also off of um, Route 39 on, on Spence's Trace. And contract one, so some of the um, numbers we have for contract one, there's 275 parcels within contract one, which uh, equates to a total estimated flow of about 57,250 gallons per day. So that's contract one. Contract two was awarded to RJV Construction. Uh, Dan, I'll there, there you go. Um, this project started a little bit later. It was bid, it was bid in the fall and awarded um, in, in the winter of, of 20, 1920. Um, estimated to be complete in June 2021. It's a little bit of a smaller project. Um, so the timeline is a little bit shorter. It's about a year and a half as opposed to two years as with contract one. Yeah. The contract value is about 6.6 .6 million. Um, and of which about 3.6 has been paid to date, um, equating to a total percent complete of about 55%. Uh, with this contract, you know, not all the pipes are in the ground yet, but they've got a good portion of them done. Uh, as they, similar to contract one, after the pipes get into the ground, they will be flipping over to focus on, on the pump stations. There are two pump stations in contract two, and they are both along Church Street, uh, sort of the upper and, and, and lower portions of Church Street. Uh, there is one other, well, there's, there's two other elements of, con of phase two. I, I will touch on one of them before I pass it over to Dan to talk about contract three. The other element that uh, we've talked about over the last year or so with the board um, at some of these meetings is, is, is the Cold Brook uh, Echo Restoration Project. Now, that, that's an important project because that, that is a project where we're not putting pipes in the ground. And it's not necessarily alternative technologies, but it's an alternative approach where we can manage it. So the way that this is this is working is Cold Brook, which is off of uh, the Cold Brook Preserve, which is off of Bank Street um, and kind of navigates its way over towards Hoyt Road and, and towards um, Route 28 and Sacquatucket Harbor. That area is going to be um, restored with an ecological restoration approach that not only it helps to address for sea level rise and, and things like that, but but it, it will address the incoming nitrogen in, in groundwater flow. So Title five septic systems that are upstream of this area um, that would, you know, in the past would have flowed under the ground uh, out to Sacramento and Harbor 
will be intercepted with with a number of, of sort of deep ponds that will be built within the within the cold brook preserve um and, and this is this is a good project because it isn't pipes in the ground you know there's we, we are trying to diversify um you know the, the projects that we are doing to to meet the cwmp and this is this is one that is an eco restoration project the status of this is we're working with we actually had a meeting earlier this week to go over the design i guess that was last week sorry it all blends together but at the end of last week we had a meeting to go over over the design we're working hand in hand with der which is the department of ecological restoration u.s fish and wildlife um service um umass dartmouth and, and a number of other folks so, so that's another um you know portion of phase two that that is moving forward um as it relates to the cobmp now for contract three I'll, I'll pass it over to dan to explain some of the particulars of, of what is a potential contract three Dan, I don't know if we can hear you. My apologies. No. Is that better? All right. Yeah. Um, so as I'm sure everyone is, is aware now that the, the second construction contract in East Harwich was ultimately broken up into two smaller contracts, leaving um, what you have in front of you before you tonight, which is the third construction contract highlighted in yellow. Um, so we still, as, as everyone's aware, don't have a start date on that. Um, but it was an estimated to be 8.4 million remaining in construction. Um, there's an additional 213 parcels and an estimated flow of another about 38,000. Um, and, and it should be noted that as we touched on in the December presentation, that uh, contract three in East Harwich lies within uh, the Pleasant Bay watershed. And if you recall, we're waiting on an additional report or a new report that reflects the updated uh, nitrogen attenuation figures since we have widened the bridge at Muddy Creek. So ultimately, what we're gonna be able to determine here in, in the next uh, you know month or so is, are these parcels still um, you know worth sewering? When we get the new attenuation rates, they are going to inform us as to if we're, if we're sewering the most efficient, effective areas possible. So we're looking forward to that. Um, you know, initially we were, were anticipating that report uh, the middle of the month. I know we, we scheduled a meeting with the Pleasant Bay Alliance. I believe it's in next week or so uh, to discuss that. So I guess I, I would turn it back and I'm sure there's gonna be questions with respect to, to contract three um, and happy to answer any. Larry, if I could, this is Joe. Yes, please, Joe. Uh, before we open for questions, I just want to build on the one thing that Dan mentioned that um, I want to speak directly to, and that is the uh, proposed contract value for contract three. That figure of 8.4 million was derived uh, well over a year ago when it was anticipated for this question to come before the town in the regular May 2020 town meeting which we know uh, was not regular and did not occur then, and it was part of the capital plan. So we fully expect that that dollar amount um, is woefully lo low. However, rather than uh, take a stab in the dark at the price, I made the decision to have that dollar amount be consistently referenced throughout. So uh, tomorrow night when the board goes over the capital plan, we still show contract three at, um, uh, at a cost of 8.4 million. I just wanna put it out there that fully understand that that cost is expected to go up, but it has not been reevaluated um, pending, pending this discussion, quite frankly. Thank you. Uh, Joe, could I uh, uh, add to that if I'm, if I'm correct, if uh, the data information that Dan is Considering if that comes in that shows we need the sewer less, uh, the value in fact could be less than 8.4 uh, uh, because we'll be doing less work. Reason I, if that's correct, the reason I say this is is that if we move forward with a uh, a warrant article, uh, the cost at this point would be a uh, it's basically a place center at this point. Yep. Larry, I have a question. Yes. Uh, 
because this is a fundamental question. I believe the Macquarie's brought it up, so I'd like to hear an answer. Uh, I think it's going to wind up being a question that's thrown to Dan, but is everything that we're talking about doing in East Harwich going to be credited under uh, the remediation uh, goals that we uh, have from the state? Uh, I can uh, I can start and turn it over to Dan, uh, but Dan's been working very what waters. It's been the uh, Pleasant Bay uh, water uh, discharge permit basically, which we've made a commitment in uh, how much nitrogen we're going to remove from Pleasant Bay. And yes, if we can demonstrate that we're removing less, we do get credit for that. In I'm talking that, about the uh, parcel, Larry. Not the overall, I'm talking about is every parcel that we've identified for remediation heading towards a goal of what we have committed to. So, Larry, if you want me to. Uh, go ahead, yes, go ahead, Dan. All right, I'm gonna, if I can just quickly pull up another image so I can make the discussion, I think, easier to understand. Bear with me. Sorry, it's taking a little uh, second to get loaded here because it's the internet here. All right. So let me know when that shows up on your screens there. I have it now. All right. So as it was explained to me, um, so about a year or so ago, I, I started participating in the Pleasant Bay Alliance um, watershed meetings. So. It, in those meetings, I, we have been discussing Pleasant Bay, the nitrogen mitigation, what we get credit for, and how that nitrogen is credited. Um, I was explained that the wellhead areas or the, the wellhead sub watersheds, right? So if you can see this screen here, let me pull up the highlighter. So right here, you see Muddy Creek Well. If you can see the color, there's kind of a brown finger-like shaped in there. So the groundwater within that circle gets pulled to the well field and gets pumped out and ultimately into the drinking water, right? So the water within that area, as well as the one up here in uh, underneath the, the pointer here, also goes to the well field that's right on Pleasant Bay. So the water in these areas doesn't make it to Muddy Creek or ultimately to Pleasant Bay. Therefore, unfortunately, we do not get mitigation credits for parcels within those subwatersheds. Hey, Dan, it, it's Steve Ford. Is there a chance that um, on having them reconsider, we might possibly get some credit here? Yeah, and so, and, and one of the things that Pleasant Bay, so, and just to note again, that the Pleasant Bay Alliance is the recipient of the, the first subwatershed permit in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, right? So. We are working with the regulators in a lot of these uh, conversations. Um, there's the regulators, there's UMass, there's uh, all the acronyms, if you will. And, and we are working with them um, right now on stormwater and how to get mitigation credits for stormwater. So with this being an adaptive management plan and, and all of those items being baked into the targeted plan for East Harwich, I don't think it's inconceivable that we couldn't you know, find some way to get there, but at this point, um, that we haven't been given any credit. Right. Okay. Thanks. Dan. Yeah. In the existing contract one and contract two area, are are some of the are some of those areas in this area where we're not getting credited? Yes. Yeah. What about I, in contract three also? Yeah, so if you're still looking on the screen, the parcels in yellow are contract one. The parcels filled in with blue are contract two. And then the green is uh, contract construction contract three. Okay. So these, these green parcels here, if you can see that uh, yeah. pointer on the screen, are, are all within that sub watershed. And can you show me the area, the circle of area that is in the exclusion area? The, oh, right here. 
if okay, I understand so the, your question correctly. Does that uh, cover 25%, 40% of the contract, the area we have under in contracts thus far? Uh, give me two seconds. I believe it's 41 plus 10%. I believe Thank it's 10%. Me. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I had to do the math in my head. Sorry. I was wondering how many houses roughly are being sewered that we don't get credits for. And also, I just want to say, I wish instead of asking if we could possibly get credits for doing something, if we were instead saying, what is the most effective thing we can do to clean Pleasant Bay? Well, I guess to your first question, I believe the exact number is 41 parcels. Did you get that? Yes, thank you. Okay. Uh, uh, I guess it, we got on this, uh, questions for this. this. <laughs> All right. So jumping back. All right. I think for um, updates on the DIY working group, uh, I'm going to turn it back to Joe. Let me just forward here. Thanks, Dan. Um, I'm really just going to reference what you can see on the slide, but the story here um, that many of you know is um, uh, one that goes back several years. The, uh, the town of Harwich, Dennis, and Yarmouth uh, met uh, as early or as recently as 2017 to discuss a potential partnership, which led to uh, the filing of legislation. Uh, the town of Harwich approved that legislation being filed uh, in uh, May of 2018 under Article 15. And the net result of that is what we now understand to be the chapter, chapter 88 of the Acts of 2019, which establishes the framework for the uh, Dennis Harwich Yarmouth uh, Tri Town Community Partnership for Clean Water. Uh, that was signed into law by Governor Baker back in October of 2019. Um, and incidentally, a month later is where I come into the scene on this um, uh, as their acting administrator at the time. Um, I was uh, directed by Chairman Ballantyne to participate in the DHY uh, working group. Uh, at that point in time, I know Chairman Ballantyne and Selectman Howell, uh, in addition to the prior administrator, were uh, presenting to that group. Um, from November on, I had asked our wastewater superintendent and town engineer to join me so that Harwich has been represented uh, for just over a year now by uh, the two selectmen who remain there, as well as myself, Dan and Griffin. And um, you'll, you can see in the timeline there, we had the presentation in, back in February, so just less than a year ago. Uh, this is the presentation that occurred between the three towns. And what came out of that was the uh, peer review that had been done by Weston and Sampson to, to validate some of the information that was prevented, presented by CDM Smith at that point. Um, since then, we've had our meetings. Of course, we've been impacted by uh, COVID-19 and the discussion really since February has centered on the particulars of the uh, proposed agreement between the three towns. And in a moment, you'll see on the next slide that really what it came down to were issues of governance, procurement and finance. Um, so you can see as a result of discussions amongst the group, uh, the first thing that occurred is the expansion of the partnership where it went from five members to seven members. And what that did for the town of Harwich is it gained us another representative on the partnerships commission, um, which uh, I think is a, is a great ad for the town. And then you can see there on the slide, there was discussion about um, how the, Dan, if you can go back for a moment, please. Um, how the uh, commission is going to be formulated, uh, even though there is um, agreement on the uh, membership numbers, you'll see that each town uh, is able to establish its own mechanism for identifying uh, the members from the, each town to serve there. Um, secondly, uh, you can go now, Dan, to procurement. Um, we spent a considerable amount of discussion on this because, quite frankly, 
um, as we know here in Harwich, uh, procurement is going to make all the difference uh, when it comes time for the for the commission uh, to go forward on professional services, design services, and all of that. So we've been able to incorporate language that even though uh, many of the procurement items would be exempt under the procurement laws, given that they relate to engineering, it is the expectation, and you can see there the statement, it is the general policy of the commission that procurement shall be done in a competitive manner to the maximum extent possible. Uh, and, and further, I take that meaning to understand that we're gonna use the best practices with regard to procurement uh, when it comes to that commission. And that will certainly be the, the mindset um, from the town of Harwich should this group go forward. Um, the only other thing I'd add at this point, Mr. Chairman, is that as you um, go into the next topic is, um, you know, I've heard a lot of discussion tonight about what's been happening in the past. And uh, we're trying to give a presentation tonight to bring everyone from the past to the present moment, and then for the board to make informed decisions on where we go from here into the future. But I want to emphasize that, um, you know, staff, uh, if I can speak for myself, Dan, Griffin, and Carol, um, we're essentially newer to the conversation. This conversation has been going on for a number of years, and in most cases, the four of us have been actively engaged in this for, for little more than a year. And the total elapsed time over that last year is really even uh, reduced from there. And so we, I understand the frustrations that I'm hearing. What I think staff is hoping for this evening is that if, as you get into the next topic on the agenda, and then after you hear the financial summary information, that the board takes some time to really get into um, a discussion on next steps and more importantly, direction for staff. It isn't that the four members um, of which I'm a part of have been advocating for uh, one program or project over the other. Rather, your staff has been approaching these projects to try and get as much information uh, as possible and vetted so that when it comes time for the board to make decisions, we can offer that information and, and, and lead the board to come to some conclusion based on the information gathered. Quite simply, we need to take our direction from the board and we need the board to tell us what your next steps are going to be. And so I use that, Mr. Chairman, as your segue to the next topic, uh, unless there are questions on the DHY working group. Any questions uh, on the working group? Uh, Don, is that? Uh, well, I, can't I, I, do have two, I do have two comments. So for, the first one is okay. that Joe's absolutely right. The, the, the people who are uh, staffed with us now uh, are, are different from the ones we started with. I, I entered into this thing a little ways into it myself, and I was mostly interested in answering the question, what if this past town meeting, what, would gov what does it look like and what do we really want the governance to look like? But the public shouldn't be, we do this a lot with words, words mean something. We keep calling this a partnership. It's not a partnership, it is creating a district or an independent commission, which we contribute members to, but it has its own governance and it has its own ability to pull money from the town absent our agreement. All we have is the representatives that are there to represent our interests in the town, but it's kind of like a port authority. It really, it is not a partnership. So Mr. Chairman, if I could just follow on that, uh, just to explain uh, the references that are in the agenda um, as far as staff goes is derived directly from the act, uh, from chapter 88 of the acts of 2019, which the title is an act establishing the DHY Clean Waters Community Partnership for the towns of Dennis, Harwich and Yarmouth. So I don't want anyone to take that, that staff is um, making up those words. I understand, I believe Selectman Howell's point um, what I'm trying to say is staff is merely making reference uh, to the legal entity, if you will. And we're doing that to try and differentiate between all the other acronyms that are out there. So we know that CWMP is Comprehensive Wastewater Management. Uh, we know that uh, DHY means the uh, Tri-Town Partnership as evidenced by the acts of 2019. I hope that helped. And my point, my point was, the for the public's edification, they need to know how that word's being used in all those documents. 
But and again, I'm going to say I have been nothing. I have nothing but admiration for what Joe and Griff and Dan have done. They've been a breath of fresh air. They're extremely honest, and I'm not trying to imply that they're they're trying to sell something by using the wrong word. But the public needs to know partnership was embodied in that legislation in a very loose way. Okay, Don. Uh, thank you for that. Any other comments? All right, could I make a comment? John Shorey here? John, yes, please. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, uh, I guess I'd direct it to, at Joe or, or the, anyone in the selectmen can, uh, can, can speak to it. Uh, in your slide, Joe, you mentioned Weston, uh, Weston and Simpson completed a peer review of the DHY costs and agreement. Can you explain uh, what came out of that peer review in, you know, a hundred words or less? I mean, you probably could have a whole topic on that, a night discussion on that, but was it, was it good, bad, or back to the drawing board, guys? Well, I, I, I can't really speak articulately towards it only because um, at the time, my role was to make sure the uh, procurement between uh, the three towns in Weston and Sampson was legal. Um, my understanding, and I'll, and I'll look to others to bail me out, but my understanding is that it was agreed by the three towns that it's a good practice um, to use the, the, the peer review process to just um, do a, um, not a deep dive, but a, um, a, a dive of some sort to just uh, go through the mechanisms, the structure, and the forms that led to uh, the DHY um, agreement process and some of the documents that were presented to the to the three towns. Um, it was meant to be um, another set of eyes that were unrelated to see if their their work passed muster. Uh, it isn't necessarily to say that the agreement is good, bad, or otherwise for any of the towns. Um, I think the thing that I took from it was just that best practice of we weren't just going to accept the reports and move forward. We were going to validate it through a peer review of another engineering firm. And if Dan or Griffin can bail me out better, I'd, I'd love to have the help. Yeah. And John, I presume you're looking more towards costs, uh, you know, what their, what their position was on that. Um, uh, yeah. Cost design. Was it a good, yeah. a yeah, good so thing or a bad thing? <laughs> You know, the, the, the one sentence, you know, introduction to their, you know, uh, summary, I think was ultimately the, the three town partnership uh, looks to make economic sense and that uh, it's, a, it's an effort worth pursuing. Um, to get in a little deeper, um, you know, they did do a review of the methodology for just developing some of the costs. Um, Unfortunately, on Cape Cod, there isn't a, a lot to compare uh, costs to, but they did agree in, in, in general with the way that the uh, costs were derived, um, especially at the planning level that we're at, they, they felt that they were appropriate. Um, May I speak, Mr. Chairman? Uh, who's speaking? Steve Ford. Uh, Steve? Yeah. Um, uh, Dan, uh, isn't it uh, also true that if we move forward um, and, and vote positively on this tonight, uh, we still have the opportunity to uh, look at what the cost will be on the plant uh, and on the flow costs? Um, and, uh, you know, if for some reason uh, the, the pricing comes in where we don't believe it makes sense for us, then we can step away from this. Right. Yeah. And I think, yeah, to that point, you know, one of the things that the, the review of Weston and Sampson, you know, of the CW or, or the DHY agreement rather, um, you know, they're saying, yeah, as a planning level, these, these costs make sense. And, and I think what Stephen was getting at was that in what we need to do to further explore those costs is sit down at the table with Dennis and Yarmouth, um, you know, with all three towns saying, yeah, we want to make this flow commitment. Once each town, you know, we get there, uh, they're going to resize the plant. The plant costs that we've been discussing were, were representative of the percentage share that we were going to, uh, that they were discussing at the time. Um, this is really where we get into the meat and potatoes of the cost of the plant, uh, the actual percent cost sharing. But in order to do that, we need to be able to get to the table with them, um, you know, and that requires the, the agreement or support of the agreement rather. 
I mean, and we have a pretty good uh, uh, example in the town of Orleans, um, having bid out their plant to give us an idea of what it would cost Howard to do a plant by itself. Right, so right. So at least and we have, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, and to that point again, you know, should the board vote in favor of the DHY agreement tonight, it's not, we're not signing on the dotted line tonight. What we're doing is saying, yes, you guys can go sit at the table with Dennis and Yarmouth. You can make a flow commitment and we can determine what that plant cost is going to be. We can then take that. And like you said, in Orleans, they just bid a 350,000 gallon per day plant and it came in at 300 and, uh, or sorry, 32 and a half million dollars. Right. So we can sit down with Dennis and Yarmouth and we can tease out that formula, see what our, our cost share is going to be. And, and we have a pretty good representative example in, in Orleans as to what it would cost us to go in alone. And, and I think, you know, our intention, or at least mine and Griffin have, have spoke about this, is that as we go through this process between now and May, should the board move forward with it, we want to tear the number down we want to build it back up and see if any pieces are missing because you know i'm an employee as an employee of the town it, it's also my job career and reputation to you know i'm not going to get up and say this whether or not you're going to save money you know i want to go and, and do the homework and, and tease out the math and say here are what your options are you know and and i think that there's a real real opportunity to save money you know Absolutely, and, and be assured that we we are relying on uh, you guys to give us this kind of guidance. I mean, clearly, there is not a member of the select board that is qualified to make the kind of, of uh, uh, study and determination that you guys are making for us, uh, which is why it's so important the role that you guys are playing now. So, uh, you know, we're 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 obviously looking closely at at uh, your guidance on this. Of course. Uh, Sandy, do you have your, you wish to speak? Yes, please. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. On uh, page 12 of the memorandum uh, published by, or put together by Weston and Sampson, um, it's kind of like the summary page for Harwich uh, cost issues. It's t That's the title. And uh, this this will argue against my, <laughs> my, my view, but um, it basically says that the cost per linear foot was high, uh, recognizing the high estimated cost per foot across the board. Uh, and even uh, phase three, there was an anomaly of $1,700 per linear foot. Um, and, and the conclusion was that um, those numbers were probably too high so that if those numbers came down to what they would expect it to be, a DHY system would, would only look better. Um, so uh, that was part of their opinion for joining. I'm not saying I hold that opinion. In fact, I have uh, my doubts about DHY, but uh, if you look to page 12, there's a nice summary of uh, to John Chory's question about the, the cost per linear foot. And uh, their synopsis was that it was probably higher, the cost per linear foot, than what it actually would be. I just wanted to add that. Okay. Thank you, Sandy. Larry? Larry? Uh, yes. Don? Uh, yeah, I, I agree with everything uh, Stephen said about exploring options and that we're not qualified ourselves without staff to understand you know, the cost differences and everything. But I do want to caution everybody on the board and everybody in the public that if we move forward, the interval will still be between now and town meeting. Should the town meeting vote for this, the mechanism to get out of this agreement simply is almost impossible. I mean, once you're in, you're in. So we'd have to be really serious about the examination and we have to be really committed to, you know, the conclusion for it, which again, I'm confident that the people that we got involved are the people we want to be involved. But the, the real point that needs to be made is once we enter into this, you don't get out of it that easily if you read the agreement. Thank you, Don. Depending on the- Andy, one, uh, one last comment on this topic. Yeah, I, I want to piggyback on what Don said, because I read carefully the, the rules for getting out of this. And if I'm reading correctly, once we're in, we're stuck for at least 15 years in Section 12. Uh, no ifs, ands, or buts. And if we want to get out after that, um, we're, we're stuck with three years of cost going into the future, and it reduces by one-third year over year for the three years. 
So um, it, it's almost uh, it's like suicide if we go into this and then decide to pull out. But can I can I speak to that, Larry? You can. Yeah. So it just just to provide a little bit more to that that conversation. So when we're talking about DHY and what we're talking about tonight is making you know should the board support the agreement we'll be making a flow commitment for the initial build out of the the construction plant right so that when we go out to bid the district's going to bond the the money to build that plant and there's going to be bond payments on that for you know 15 20 30 years whatever they bond it for um we are making a flow commitment today it, that that we are anticipating we can afford to build the infrastructure to send that flow during this initial build out of the treatment plant. If in 15 years from now, when we are asked again, do we want to build, you know, more capacity in the treatment plant? We don't have to say yes. If IA systems at that point in time have, have been approved through DEP and, and they're a viable option for our town, we don't have to commit additional flow 15 years from now. But we're not going to tear out the pipes in the ground that we've, that we've already put in. So we're going to continue to send the, you know, say we commit two, 300,000 gallons this year. We don't ever have to increase that, but we're not, it, we're not stuck with having to sewer in perpetuity, if that makes sense. Okay. Uh, Larry, thank Larry, you. Just one, Larry, just one comment. Michael. Yes, please. Just a just a timing comment. Um, you know, if we vote this tonight, it's four months till town meeting. And and I would say again, you know, we found ourselves in a position I think uh, even even further behind the other two towns. Granted that we're ahead on uh, ahead on what we've spent on sewering, but we have four months not only to have the staff do the work that you're all talking about, but then to educate all the public, and, and to be prepared for town meeting. And, and uh, I know we can't keep kicking this can down the road, but we've really put ourselves in the same position we were in on East Harwich. Though the numbers may, may be better going into town meeting, and, and we're going to hear the numbers next four months, people. Larry? Uh, thanks, Michael. You raise a, you raise a uh, good discussion point. Uh, Joe, I... Larry? Uh, I'm sorry, who's uh, Ed? Ed, I can't quite. Ed, thank you. Go ahead. I think we ought to, uh, if you look at the uh, section 12 withdrawal from the partnership, um, it if we if we decide to withdraw and make that motion, um, it's where it says we're shall be liable to the partnership as defined in the following paragraphs for each share of the indebtedness of the partnership outstanding at the time of such withdrawal. Well, if we get to that point and they've, they've developed the plans for the sewer plant and it looks like it's not going to be a good deal to us and we vote to withdraw before that, before they've in incurred any indebtedness we're not on the hook for anything thanks for that ed can we move ahead next to the uh, uh financial aspects i'm not sure dan are you starting this then turning it over to griffin and then turning it over to carol yeah yeah i think in that order <laughs> all right okay. um, so, you know, working to put the, the, the financial summary together uh, with Carol, Joe, Griffin, and myself, um, you know, we discussed at length the best way to provide a realistic and fair financial outlook comparing a Harwich-only approach versus a DHY approach. Uh, the values in the comparison were derived uh, from the Harwich-only phasing plan provided by CDM Smith as well as the technical report provided by GHD um, in the development of the Harwich Center model. The group internally also reviewed all that information. And, and after looking at it, 
you know, there was very different scheduling approaches with respect to DHY and with um, the CWMP. And let me just jump to a slide here. So what we wanted to do was to try to provide a, a fair, honest comparison. Um, and, and we did that in a 10 year outlook. Um, and what we included in that for the Harwich only option is phase two contract three in East Harwich, phase three in East Harwich, and the cost to build the wastewater treatment facility and effluent recharge site for Harwich only. So when we're looking at the figures later on that, that Carol's gonna discuss, we were looking at just those. And we looked at only those because if you recall the presentation we gave back in December with the sewer CAD model, we included only the DHY plant and effluent recharge and the Harwich Center collection system, as well as phase two contract three. So as we move forward and discuss the outlook, just understand that there is the cost for a treatment plant in each of the comparisons, a, a, a fairly comparable const, uh, construction contract for pipes in the ground, as well as phase two contract three. So Carol, if I, can yeah, Jen, if I may add on, you know, this, this was our effort to really, you know, use all the, use the best available information that we have and make sure we're comparing apples to apples, uh, make sure we're comparing the same fruit. And, you know, it might not be the exact same type of apple, but, but this for comparative purposes, it's a good analysis for us to determine whether there's cost savings potential. So, and as Dan said, you know, if, if, if the board chooses to move forward, We've got our, we've got our work cut out for us. We know there's a lot of work to be done to to dig into these numbers in, in greater detail and and make sure when we come back we're we're continuing to move that right direction. Right now we think that there is some cost saving opportunities with DHY, but we need to take these next steps along the way to continue to to validate those assumptions. Um, you know, I think with any plan, once you assume something and then you advance it a little bit, you really need to circle back on your assumptions, and and that's. You know, it's similar with the CWMP. You know, the CWMP was meant to be a 40-year plan. We're about, you know, I guess five years into the implementation. So it's not a bad time to take a step back and say, all right, let's reevaluate and see where we are, see what other technologies there are out there, and then, you know, adjust and, and move forward. If if I can add on just one more thing, Griff, too, and, and yeah. with, with respect to the Harwich Only plan, the reason we included what we included was because if we put in the Harwich phase four collection system as it was presented in, in the schedule on the screen right now, it's much more aggressive than DHY and it would have disproportionately skewed the the data. I think, I don't know if the, Sandy or, or, or Clara mentioned that earlier about the graphs and you, you know, you can manipulate those to whichever way you want. So we wanted to make, make this as, as honest and transparent as we could. So we really tried to do apples to apples on both sides. So I guess, Carol, if you want to jump in or. Thank you. Uh, uh, Claire, uh, quickly, Claire, uh, Claire, and then we'll move to Carol. Thank you. I just wanted to add that um, because of my concerns about East Harwich, I really delved deep into Pleasant Bay watershed and, and not the others, but um, be, we keep talking about how the CWMP is a living document and we can we could just tinker with it and move forward. But if there are initial assumptions, like uh, Sandy was saying, a foundational issue, like build out assumptions in the flows headed towards Dennis, and if no one ever evaluated the possibilities and the costs of actually limiting growth and not necessarily building out to current zoning even, then we haven't had that choice to evaluate that option. And so I find it hard to get excited about committing to DHY when initially at the very beginning of all this planning, some of those choices were never, never even looked at um, and never people never got to discuss if they might prefer that. Uh, Larry, if I could respond to that real quick. Good, good point. I, let me just... Uh, that's one of the reasons that we're moving forward with an eight-phase plan to give us a chance to adjust going forward. Uh, Dan? 
Yeah, and I just just wanted to note that that with respect to DHY, um, you know, one of the things that we did do in this one, you know, myself personally was go in and take a, a 2013 to 2019 parcel by parcel water use data for the subject parcels that we that were proposed for DHY, and that those were the figures that we used to generate the number we're considering for a flow commitment. It was not born upon any zoning or, or any other plan. It was strictly on what the average water use per parcel has been for the last six, seven years. Okay, now let me move on now, Claire, and we'll come back as we go. Uh, Carol? Hi, good evening, thank you. Um, so I wanted to let you know that the document that you have before you um, on the screen is only a partial of, of the total document that was prepared by CDM Smith. Um, that document, um, it was titled, or is titled, Details of Harwich Only Phasing Plan and DHY Phasing Plan Costs. So it shows a comparison side by side um, of those um, two cost models um, that was prepared by CDM Smith. We, are, we were only using the, um, the Harwich Only um, costs um, that were um, that were presented on that document for this purpose. Um, so before we get to looking at numbers and graphs, I, I just wanted to explain the foundation of how we bu I built these debt schedules because that's essentially how the taxpayers, of course, are going to be paying for sewering. Um, the estimated debt schedules um, were prepared assuming that the construction portions of these um, contracts would be eligible for Massachusetts Clean Water Trust, the um, state revolving loan fund, and, and that would be the construction portions only. We assume we didn't go ahead and make an assumption that um, we, the town of Harwich would be awarded a 0% interest rate. We um, instead assumed um, the, the trust 2% interest rate for all the construction portions of those contracts. And then we, for the design contracts, um, we would be going out into the bond market. And the bond market, as we all know, does fluctuate over time. We're assuming a 3.5% interest rate for those items. Um, further, the, these were built on 20 year models. So meaning the long-term debt would be issued for 20 years, and that's just an assumption. Things can certainly change. Um, the, so the, the, um, then let's move forward to the next slide. Thank you. Um, the DHY comparison that you're going to see, um, we use the cost estimates um, that were um, derived from GHD with an escalation clause or, or an escalation calculation per year. We assumed the same information such as um, uh, funding from Massachusetts Clean Water Trust for the construction portions of these um, um, uh, projects at a 2% interest rate. We use 3.5% interest rate for the design. We assume the site excuse me, the same lifetime of the long-term debt at 20 years. Um, so let's move forward. I believe what we're gonna see first is, in, and this is in no particular order here. Um, this is information on the DHY partnership um, or district as we may wanna call it. Um, so this is long-term debt that would be issued over a 10 year period um, with principal and interest payments. Um, the baseline here is what the town of Harwich has already um, authorized in borrowing. So meaning we have existing debt, we have existing debt for the interconnection and planning with Chatham. We have debt that will be, that has been authorized, but unissued. And that includes the milestone payments for Chatham. It includes um, Cold Brook. It includes um, contracts one and two, which are not finalized um, for, um, for that debt, uh, but we, the town has been authorized at 0% for the state revolving loan fund. Um, and, and it also includes the Chatham pump station, which is also part of these projects that has already been approved. In addition to that, um, 
we have estimated borrowings. If the town were decided to move forward with DHY, um, there would be estimated borrowings that through um, 2031. And so those, uh, the items that were included there are, is the actual plant um, and the, the design and construction of that plant. The, and then area one or the central um, DHY area in Harwich. And then in, of course, we've also included um, CWMP phase two contract three. So the numbers are presented here for you as, and, and you know, it's pretty, it's sometimes it's difficult to decipher numbers and to see them. And some folks like to see, like to see them on a chart, I uh, would prefer that method. The, the item on the left hand part of the screen um, just compares the current where we, what currently has been authorized. Um, the, the second chart in the center of the screen shows um, just the DHY component. And then the third is a, a combination of both of those items. Um, this compares it to an average single family home. So the axis on the right hand side of each chart shows what the increase in taxes, so the, the tax impact would be. The left hand part of that, the, each one of those charts shows what the debt payments would be or the estimated debt payments. You want to go to the, do you have questions on this? Yeah, I do. Uh, Carol, this is Don. Yes. Uh, the, the, uh, so far in everything that you've discussed, you're talking about the commitment, the uh, collaborative commitment to building the plant. Three times the expenses of this collaboration are our own expenses for laying pipe, putting in collectors and whatever. And it's driven by a couple of factors, not just where we have to deliver everything to and what we decide that we're going to sewer, but it's also uh, there's a timeline with this. When the state opens uh, Route 28, which I believe is 2024, we will have to put dry pipe in even if the uh, processing plant isn't ready yet because it's going to be a lot more expensive to lay that pipe, plus which is a five-year moratorium. So is that part of your assumptions here? Because I'm just seeing the plant and the collaborative uh, costs that we're going to be sharing. That is not part of the assumptions here. That the, the assumptions are only um, based on, we're, we're trying to compare like matters. So the, the, the CDM Smith uh, outline and uh, timeline, um, I, I do not believe included that either. So we were just trying to compare like, you know, like Griffin said, apples to apples as best we could. Uh, I get that, except that our borrowing has to be accelerated forward in order to be able to accomplish the things I just said to you. The, 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 and that cost is three times what the cost of the plant is. We're going to be moving our, uh, our debt instruments forward by several years by resequencing this plant. Uh, Dan, I would uh, ask Griffin and, and, or Don, ask Griffin and, and uh, Dan to chime in, but I yeah. believe the DHY partnership numbers do include the collection systems. But not the yeah. pipes. Yeah, so they do. So, and that's what we included yes. in, in both of these is the phase two contract three pipes in the ground. And in the Harwich only, we also included phase three pipes in the ground and the plant. And then for DHY, we included the DHY plant phase two contract, three pipes in the ground, and DHY Harwich Central pipes in the ground. So that's what this reflects. Now, to your point, yeah, we did not capture the Route 28 component in here. And, and that kind of harks back to the, the summary at the December presentation where I was talking about you know, breaking up these, instead of doing massive projects, do smaller ones more frequently. And we've, we've reached out to MassDOT about doing, you know, being a non-participant for, for the sewer as well as the water in that section of the project they're doing. Um, you know, and, and we're just not at a point yet where we even have a dollar figure from them or, or advance those conversations yet to, to include them in, in this 
presentation. However, you know, with the idea that we can do these smaller, more frequently, that would allow us the flexibility to adapt and pick something like that in as we continue moving forward. And I guess if I could add in just a little bit too, if we do end up going that route, you know, we, we might want to delay one of our other segments here. So we're offsetting, you know, the borrowing by not just going in all, all at once, but that's something we'll have to sort of evaluate as, as we continue to get more information. Dan. Yep. Uh, who's, uh, that's Ed. Ed, Ed, go ahead, please. So, um, both sets of estimates contain pipes in the ground. Um, you don't, you didn't, uh, uh, include uh, a factor for uh, the uh, uh, coordinating with the Department of Transportation's repaving on, on 28. But if we are able to take advantage of that, both for um, our water system and our sewer system, uh, does that represent a savings if we have to basically uh, dig up a street and put in our pipes and repave it ourselves? Yeah, I mean, if we can participate in Mass Dots project, it would save the town millions, um, you know, just in pavement restoration alone. And, and it, you know, to extend that further, if the sewer project combined with the, the remainder of the water main project on 28, all the way down to Lower County Road, you know, instead of repairing the pavement twice, we could we could repave it, you know, once. So we Again, could, the, the, the savings could far, far outweigh any ad additional cost to the taxpayers of, of, of some level ex of accelerated uh, tax payment. I, if I get what you're saying, I, I believe that's correct. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Carol, uh, go ahead. So with this example that we you have before you, um, the average homeowner in Harwich, so the average single value of a uh, um, residential property in Harwich in um, the current fiscal year is $584,700. And while that may not represent everyone's, you know, the average of everyone's home that may be on to this evening, um, um, that 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 is what this is based on. Um, so given what that is based on, if the costs remain the same as this model, if the interest rates were re were to remain as um, prepared in this model, um, the average tax impact, so the increase in taxes in the last year of um, of this um, um, uh, model here is about eight hundred dollars per homeowner. How about if we compare it to the next one? Okay. So the high which only plan, again, I used um, CDM Smith's uh, um, uh, schedule and timeline to support this uh, information. The baseline, meaning the CWNP that has already, we have existing debt in Harwich. There's already been debt that's been authorized and unissued in Harwich. That base is the same. And then we add, we, I added in information from CDM Smith. And, and this is again, Harwich only. So it includes phase two contract three at $8.4 million. It includes phase three, and it includes uh, what I called or uh, named as phase 4A, which includes the treatment facility, um, the design and construction of that facility, and the effluent recharge design and construction. Um, the information presented here is over a 10 year span. So it certainly doesn't include the entire project and nor did the prior. Um, it's based on the interest rates that I had mentioned before. Um, the charts here show you um, what the current um, CWMP, the, what's already been authorized in Harwich, um, the information for just the Harwich only plan, which is phase three and a portion of phase four, and then a combination of both of them. 
This, it's compared to the same information on an average single um, residential home, the value of that home. Um, and in the chart to the far right um, shows in the last year, um, an estimated increase or tax impact of a thousand dollars per um, per per residential um, tax bill. I just have a simple comparison of the last two um, charts for you for your review um, and discussion, um, and then we can certainly talk about timing and where um, if you if you move forward with DHY where. I, I have another chart here that outlines um, the timing of the debt and certainly that may change and where um, it may be impacted with a larger cost um, in certain years. And I believe that's 26 and 27. Um, if the schedule were to remain the same, that if you if the town moved forward with DHY, you'd see 20, 2026 and 2027 where the costs would exceed if the town moved forward with Harwich only, other than if they um, chose to move forward with Harwich only, but you will see that the Harwich only model here um, has greater costs in the long run. I'm happy to answer any questions that may arise. Larry? Yes. Um, in your Calculation of tax rates, Carol? Yes. Um, in figuring the costs, do you show any offset um, based on you utilizing any funds from the 2.75 uh, room occupancy tax that's dedicated to offset wastewater uh, expenses? Well, that's a great question because I posed that question myself. Um, and what I'm told is that we don't know how that's going to be distributed yet. Um, and and so I, I was not able to use that in either one of these um, um, these models. In addition to that, you know, the town may make decisions and maybe you don't might not want to get into this conversation now, but the town may make decisions with um, just short-term rental tax, uh, dedicating it to wastewater. Um, the town may make decisions on, you know, a water infrastructure improvement fund. I, and I, I was not able to include those um, because I wasn't sure what avenue the town was going to take. Do we know what the collection in this initial year has been? of the water uh, wastewater fund? That, I, uh, I just wanna make sure I understand your question. Um, the water wastewater fund for the short-term rental that was assigned? Yes, oh, yes. I, I, I do not have that number with me. I'm sorry. Okay, thank you. Point of information, Larry, since I'm on that board, it helped create the governance part of this. It's irrelevant what the town collects for our contribution towards this. It's going to be distributed project by project for uh, state revolving fund uh, the projects that are eligible uh, based on what's available in each year. They're probably going to pick out four projects. And I might point out that we're eligible for East Harwich right now. So if we elect to go uh, go after that, we're not gonna get DHY reimbursement for quite some time because the idea of the whole thing was to distribute equitably across the Cape, but it doesn't have anything to do with what's collected in each town. Uh, thank you, Don. Any other questions or comments for Carol? Well, Carol. In, in your calculation of the tax rate, does that include the East Harwich projects? Yes, yes it does. But I, I will tell you that I did not escalate any um, valuation of properties over this 10 years. I used the FY21 
um, assessed valuation um, for all of these calculations. Okay. So if funds from the oh, Don, help me out. What's the name of the fund? I just use the uh, wastewater management board, but it's the clean waters uh, okay. uh, rental tax money. So if we receive funds from the clean water tax fund, um, it would go to reducing our uh, tax rate over on the contracts one and two and potentially three. If that's what we submitted for, yes. Okay. But again, if you if you do that, you can't swing back around in two years and say, now we want money for DHY. There's 15 towns competing with SRF eligible uh, projects. So yeah. four of them are going to be funded in any given year. Yeah. Okay. Larry, if I may. Michael, sure. Just to put that in perspective, the people that are listening, uh, Don, what are we talking about? Uh, contribution or Carol? Uh, I think we're under four hundred thousand for the first year, if if my math's correct, based on what the other fund is. So four hundred thousand off of twenty million isn't going to amount to much of a tax reduction for anybody. No, actually, they're going to be giving a significant amount over a four-year arc, and that was the reason that they decided not to go after. Uh, funding things and buying them down over 20 years because we didn't know what the collections were going to be and we felt pretty safe that we could get an actuary to tell us over four years how much money was going to be generated in those taxes. So there's a lot more than that that's going to be involved, but I can't give you a number. So Don, just I I explain that a little better. We, it, we only contributed 2.75% of our rooms tax. Doesn't matter. So we'll be, we'll be, we'll have access to the other town's money for our project. Yeah, it's driven, it's driven by collectively putting that into a bucket. And then the uh, management board looks at the requests for reimbursement and picks out the four and it's irrelevant what you collected. You get, as a matter of fact, that's both the delicate part of the negotiations where some towns thought they were getting hosed because they weren't getting back what they gave in. And the point is, this is a regional problem. So, it's not dictated. You don't get every penny back in any given year and you don't wind up being limited by what you collected in any given year. It's driven by the cost of the projects. Does that hey, help? Michael? Yeah, I guess I, I, I think that's another, another subject um, that the board needs to get updated on. Um, and I know that that's been an ongoing negotiation, but I think similar to this one and, and, and uh, us kind of being in the dark as a total board, I'd like to get an update on what all this is. Uh, I totally agree with Michael on that. We should. Other questions or comments for Carol? This, uh, hearing on this move on, we have in the packet uh, a couple versions of the, or at least the latest version of the agreement. But I think we've covered the high points of that. Joel, was, are you, uh, uh, you want to talk more about the agreement or not? Well, we're certainly prepared to answer questions on it, but um, you know, the salient points as it relates to Harwich were the governance issues that we talked about and the procurement mechanisms. So unless there's more questions on that, um, I'll defer yes, to the board. I, Larry? Can Don, please. up? Can somebody explain to me what 12.5 in the agreement means if we can get out at any point we want to? I think that uh, Ed raised that point. Ed, you uh, want to uh, go back and- well, No, he, he was quoting from a different section respectfully. He was quoting above that. 12.5 is one sentence and it says, in no event shall withdrawal by any member town take place prior to the expiration of 15 years next following the effective date of this agreement. Uh, uh, Dave Young's on the line. Maybe you can uh, expand on what, our, what, what these all mean. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, David Young, CDM Smith. 
section 12.5 was put in, uh, I forget who requested it, but it's actually the same wording you have in your Monomoy school agreement. Uh, there was discussion about how quickly someone could uh, decide to um, not join or remove themselves, withdraw from the uh, partnership. So by all reality, by the time you get up and running, get things going, get additional uh, flow coming to the plant, it takes a few years. There's a five-year review of the operations and then a 10-year uh, but that 15 year period was felt by the subgroup to be realistic. And again, that wording comes directly from your Monomoy school agreement. That wasn't a question. I just said, what does it mean in English to people? Uh, it means that when you join, um, you can't uh, withdraw for the first, the three members who are joining, uh, can't withdraw for the first 15 years. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. Uh, Joe, I'll, I'll turn it back to you for, I think, the next item on the agenda is a discussion then, and where we go next. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, but not to play uh, table tennis. I was actually going to turn it back to you uh, for you to open it up for the board for discussion. Um, to, to give a preamble to that again, uh, what you have tonight is information that's been cobbled together by staff um, working diligently over the last several uh, days, weeks, uh, months to get information in front of the board on any of these topics that relate to wastewater. And now what we would hope is that the board engage in conversations and discussions uh, on any of these topics to either uh, make some decisions or make some determinations as to what staff should do next. Um, I say that to remind everybody that staff has not been advocating for any one proposal or any one action. Rather, we've been working within the frameworks uh, that were in place and that existed before we came on, on the scene. And so, you know, for a number of reasons, Mr. Chairman, as you know, this is a timely discussion, uh, especially as it relates to DHY, because uh, as we can all attest from the subgroups, the other two towns are moving forward. Now it's entirely possible that they can continue to move forward, whether there's a commitment from the town of Harwich or not. I, for one, wouldn't want that action to occur simply because of stasis. I, I would rather it to be a conscious decision of the town through the board or otherwise, uh, because if we if they progress and we're out of it, the question then becomes, what are we going to do? And so that's why you, I believe you've had this dedicated meeting tonight, uh, why, we've, why we've had staff work so diligently on all of the topics that were presented there. It's really now for us to turn it back to you and say, what do you all think? Thank you, Joe. From my perspective, I would like us to consider uh, DHY first and go back to contract three. The, uh, and I say DHY because I think we meet, need to make a decision if we want to include a warrant article regarding DHY for this spring's uh, meeting. I agree that uh, there's still unknowns we'd have to work out in the uh, action going forward. Uh, we don't, but uh, we're committed in some ways to at least to let the other towns being Dennis and Yarmouth know uh, what our decision is. Am I? A lot of discussion, my belief is, is that we do a disservice if we go alone in Harwich and not try to work with our neighbors to make a most cost-effective uh, solution to uh, our wastewater uh, commitments. So I'll open it up to the rest of the board. Well, never uh, heard this much silence. <laughs> um, Steve Ford, Larry. Um, uh, well, I know, uh, you know, our, our, uh, our team of, uh, of experts, uh, don't necessarily want to, um, indicate one, uh, specific or another relative to a recommendation. I do get a sense of a certain degree of comfort that they have, uh, relative to moving to the next step on DHY, uh, and allowing them to continue to negotiate. 
um, and uh, go through the numbers, uh, both for the plant um, and for the flow. Uh, and again, uh, it's my, my belief here from my discussions that, you know, we have that ability that if, that if we're not, if we're not satisfied uh, with where the direction is headed on, uh, on the entire agreement, uh, that we have the ability to, even though we have staked the spot in the, in the warrant, to recommend to uh, town meeting that we not, we not move ahead. So we do have a safety valve in this, at least it's my understanding, and I can be corrected by, by Dan or, or Joe uh, or Griff. Uh, one way or the other on that, but uh, uh, am I correct in, in that? Is, is, I mean, I I get a sense that uh, we feel uh, um, uh, pretty confident in the team that we have. Um, we feel pretty confident in joining with uh, other towns is probably a more uh, effective way of dealing with these uh, sewer issues because they are so expensive. Um, so I, uh, you know, I, 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 I get a sense that that, that might be the route that we want to think about going. <clears throat> Thank you, Steve. Uh, Ed, do you have your uh, microphone on? Yes. Um, well, listening to, uh, uh, Mr. Powers comments, I felt, uh, I read into them that and I may be wrong, but that uh, I think he was uh, supported, support the, the concept of, of moving forward and taking this uh, matter to town meeting um, and develop, continuing to develop the information as we move along. Um, uh, I think uh, I heard from Carol Kukla, Coppola, I'm sorry, um, and uh, Dan uh, Pelletier that uh, the belief is that this would be a good step for the town to take uh, in terms of uh, developing an affordable uh, plan for providing for our wastewater needs. Um, and I'm not exactly sure where uh, Mr. Ryder falls on it, um, but uh, I'm sure that uh, the engineering uh, uh, that he's checked, uh, he, he hasn't raised any uh, um, problems that uh, he's expressed uh, with the uh, studies and, and proposals that have been put forth between uh, CDM Smith and Western Sampson and what's the other firm? I'm sorry if I can't remember. G uh, GHD. GHD um, on the, the data and suggestions. So um, at this point, I certainly think that uh, this uh, proposal is worthy of us to in uh, endorsed to be put as a uh, warrant article for town meeting and uh, for us to take a final action on support or non-support as we get more information and get closer uh, to town meeting. Thank you, Ed. Uh, Don? Well, uh, you, Larry, you and I both know that what the uh, yeah, other potential partners want is an absolute commitment uh, because they've made that. I'm, I'm more where uh, Steve is that uh, I'd vote to allow it to be on the town meeting warrant and use the ensuing months, although Michael's right too. That's a real short period of time. We've been uh, dipsing with this for two and a half years. Uh, but I'd be willing to place it on the warrant, but I'm not willing to actually take a position in favor of it until we know uh, more. And I'm not sure if that's gonna satisfy Dennis or Yarmouth officials. I, um, I'm with that though. I think uh, right now I'm actually uh, want to put it on the town warrant. My position is so we can, we can move forward. It may not completely satisfy the other towns, but it's the direction I, it's the only, it's the only direction that makes sense to me, Don. Well, you know, Larry, if I could. Yeah, Steve? 
uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, the other two towns, whether they say they're, you know, committed and all of that, all they have done is voted to put it on their town meeting warrant. They could easily turn around and recommend to the town meeting that they don't want to do it. Uh, in, in the time between now and the final wrap up of how these, how we all are going to participate, uh, Dennis or Yarmouth could do the same thing we're going to do, uh, or, or we're the same thing we're believing we can do. Um, and, and I, I, even though they may have, you know, crowed about the fact that they voted for it and they're all for it, um, I still think they have the same out. So, um, I don't think we're doing anything different. I guess my point long, was, as long as we define it clearly. My point was, Steve, that I wouldn't support something that says we fully support it and we're going to carry it through the town meeting, but I would support placing it on an article and using that time to examine how committed we are, uh, are going to be to that uh, with the idea that, that we still have the option to either make a positive or a negative recommendation to town meeting. Yeah, I, I would yeah. I would agree with you, Don. And I think I won't speak for for Dan and Joe, and that, and our team. But I think our team feels the same way. Okay, uh, Michael. Yeah, I actually have some questions based on uh, the working group. Um, you know, I, I I this week got more information from some of the other towns than I've gotten from Don and Larry, and, and that's not. Um, it just hasn't been on the agenda, and we have not discussed this as a board. And I really believe that we have not discussed this or held enough public hearings on this and gotten engagement from the public. If you look at this meeting tonight, we obviously can't tell how many people are watching, uh, but there's only a few from the public other than staff on this, on this call tonight. So I guess my first question is, uh, and Don or Larry, when we talk about uh, a seven member commission, that seven member commission, uh, where are you guys with recommendation on whether they're appointed or elected? Uh, the, our position, at least from our, our committee was there would be a, they'd be appointed by the board of selectmen. Okay. Now that in my mind is our first mistake because I, uh, I have to say, Michael, that I was a dissenting voice in an awful lot of this. Uh, so my position, First of all, that it hasn't been on the agenda is not because I haven't asked for it to be on the agenda. I've been asking for a year for this to be a more full discussion with us. So I appreciate what you're saying. Second, I am really concerned because it is not a partnership and the people who serve on this thing, uh, the quality of them makes a big difference in, in the outcome. So I was trying on all these governance changes to get it closer to some public control because it doesn't have any town meeting action at the other end of it. Once you uh, accept this and you appoint the commissioners, it goes on its own. It, uh, it, it's not like a regional school district where they have to come into town meeting to get their budget approved. They are free and independent. So I understand what you're saying. And, and I've been on that uh, part, on that ledge with you, but I'm very concerned about who it is that those people would be and the mechanism about how they'd be picked. Uh, thank you for that, Don. And I, and I would just say, I appreciate your comment about trying to get this on the agenda. The other towns would have these wow. meetings and then the very next board of selectmen's meeting, it would be on the agenda and they would discuss the contents of the meeting and their residents and their board members have all been kept apprised of this from the beginning. And I, and I believe to, that, that I have been in the dark on this. Certainly I could be told I could have gone and read the minutes, but that's really not the point because the public uh, should have been engaged. As for uh, you being the descending vote, Don, this, in, in my opinion, is a vote that, um, and, and I do appreciate Stephen Ford's comments about uh, getting it on the warrant. We can back out last minute if we want to back out. But fundamentally, uh, you being a descending vote, I, I see this as we're going to have two appointed people that we're going to put a total of seven appointed people as a taxing authority to our residents. And we really are going to have no say once this, once this commission is uh, uh, finished. And if they decide 10 years from now that they want to spend an extra $30 million, we really don't, we don't really have a leg to stand on as a Boris Blackman. We'll have appointed people in there, but um, you know, and I'm not saying that we're going to get much better uh, elected because if people don't run, 
they don't run. And then there should probably be a mechanism for that. But I, I don't think appointing people in a seven member commission is in the best interest of the town. That's first, I, I guess to Joe Powers. Uh, Michael, can I, can I just uh, make a comment on that, on your first, yes. uh, your first point? Yes. Uh, we, we did have a lot of discussion on the uh, on how Harwich would uh, get us two members on the board, as the other towns did as well. There's discussion about elected uh, versus appointed. In the end, the at least the general dis overall discussion, and I appreciate Don's uh, reservations and dissension, was that the boards are elected, uh, each town board is elected, and we should uh, entrust them with uh, appointing uh, quote, qualified people, engineers or people with wastewater experience, things that we could fine tune a little more broadly or more narrowly rather than, uh, than being elected, which sometimes is more of a popularity vote than it is a uh, technical vote. So it's a judgment call, but that we did, we did have a lot of discussions on that. I just wanted to uh, uh, bring that up. Uh, well, I agree with you. We sh uh, your other part of that discussion was we should have brought it to the board uh, quicker. I was I was holding off a bit because I wanted to, our, our committee at least to have an agreement on what bad language uh, that we agreed to th what the agreement said. We had a lot of discussion going back and forth before we reached a point where especially the procurement item was one that was to uh, uh, to the liking of, uh, of our members. Larry, thank you for both of the clarifications, but uh, quite honestly, we're a five-member board and you were a subcommittee appointed to go negotiate and you should have kept us in the loop the entire time. Uh, waiting for you uh, as a small group to agree before the rest of the board had opportunities to weigh in and the public got to hear what was being discussed was a disservice to the taxpayers. I'll, I'll move on from that. The um, and, and, and back to the um, appointed versus electric elected, I think that's an absolute disaster. Um, you know, as we've seen on this board, and as I mentioned, kind of, kind of going into after this uncontested election with you and Don, you know, the, the reorganization of the board was decided before the meeting. If three members of a board um, are aligned, three members of the board could put anyone they want on that. And I'm not saying that you're going to do that, or any other town would do that, but I think it's a disaster and at least elected, um, they'd be elected by the people. And I would hope something as important as this uh, would draw some people out to be elected for it. Um, going to Joe Power's comment, this should be a conscious decision of the town. And and, and Larry, you, you were involved when this East Harwich thing came before us and we were presented with um, a vote on a $24.5 million project, um, two contracts, I, I believe it was $24.5 million, was the appropriation for the Chatham uh, hook up in the two contracts. And it was an estimate. And, and we said, trust us. Um, this is a good faith estimate and pipes cost a certain amount of foot. And, and we went into town meeting with an estimate and then we got, we got slammed with a $8.4 million increase, which to Joe's point is probably closer to 10.4 million now, uh, based on how the first two contracts went. So, I don't believe that we've engaged the public enough. I don't believe the board's been engaged enough. And, and I do feel a little bad for Dennis and uh, Yarmouth because I think that they did their job. And from my understanding, um, they told you guys that we need to make a decision and we need to make it fast because we're starting to cost them money, which is why we're here tonight. So I'm gonna wrap East Harwich into this conversation just a little bit. And I think based on what our professionals have told us tonight, and I do agree with Stephen Ford that no, no member of this board is qualified to make these decisions and the professionals should make it, which is what we've relied on um, CDM Smith in the past and what, we, what we're now relying on um, two other professional firms on as well as our professional staff. And I agree with Don that we are getting better information. But Doing the math on contract one, contract two, and contract three for East Harwich, that's 152,000 gallons per day. We bought 300,000 gallons per day that we are paying a fixed O&M cost on. And somebody can correct me if I'm wrong on that, but it appears to me that we have 150,000 gallons left. 
if that's the case, what's the distance between Harwich Center and Chatham versus Harwich Center and the and the dump? And has anyone had the had the conversation, which I know the answer to this, Larry, with Chatham to ask them if they would be willing to accept gallons from another area in town? So that's a question. Um, and I'll, I'll let you answer that and then I've got to extend my comments on uh, well, Larry, can I yeah, provide yeah. a little response to that? Sorry, this okay. is okay. Go ahead. Yeah, mic on here. Uh, so just on, on the, the economics of the, the Chatham component, uh, I'm in possession of a draft document. I'm not prepared to share because I haven't spoke with the person who wrote it. Uh, but their analysis right now with our current threshold limits will require an all-in cost of a, or all-in flow of approximately 210,000 gallons. So that- Say that again, Dan. What's that? Say that again. Uh, the all-in to meet our nitrogen thresholds, again, keep in mind these are with the uh, nitrogen thresholds that are being revised for the Pleasant Bay model right now. So this number is subject to change with that new information. But with the other old threshold numbers, we were in at 210,000 gallons per day. We purchased a capacity of 300,000. Correct. Okay. So with the, with the homes that you mentioned tonight, or the slides at least, contract one, 57.250 uh, gallon, uh, thousand. I, the, the second contract two flow, I copied and pasted that text box. It, I, didn't I caught it tonight when we were, Griffin was presenting that second fifty two for contract uh, two was was an incorrect number. If you give me a second, so, so that should so that should Dan if, correct me if I'm wrong because there's less homes in contract two that should go down, not up. Bear with me. Let me just unhide myself. I can get you what that figure was. Hold on. <sighs> And this was based on, and, and the number that I just said, the 210 gallons, uh, 210,000 gallons per day was um, with the updated flow numbers that I provided to the, the consultant. So that is taking that same average water use data that I talked about for um, the Harwich Center data, the, the 2013 to 2019 flows. Um, so contract three has... An additional 40,000. Okay, so bear with me, please, Larry, because um, now I'm totally confused because the presentation we had tonight yeah. was wrong, the, so, which is making my notes wrong. So contract one, Dan, what's your flow for contract one? 57,250 gallons. What's your contract two? 24,800 gallons. What's your contract three? 39,877. And where are you getting a total of 210,000? That was based on the, the, the draft report that I was speaking of. So the, that was contracts one, two, and three. That doesn't include phase three. So the 210,000 includes the additional flow generated from phase three in East Harwich. Okay. So I guess my question is, that it's twofold. Um, when are we going to explore... Uh, and have the conversation about all of our excess capacity that we purchased and we're going to be paying for for Chatham. That's number one question. Number two question is, has, has the um, Don and, and Larry, uh, the subcommittee, have they talked to Dennis and Yarmouth in discussions about what Foxborough did? And David Young could, could uh, probably chime in on this and join Foxboro joined later. Dennis and Yarmouth built the plant. Foxboro joined later. And what would be the additional cost to Harwich going forward if we went with that model? Because we are already $31 million into this race and we still have 213 homes to, to uh, sewer if we go that direction, which I don't think we can go that direction based on tonight's information and Dan waiting for more information on that. But if we can sewer another area of town and send it to Chatham, is anyone going to do the math on that? Or are we just going to uh, embark on this DHY mission? We've, uh, I'll answer your first part. We, uh, Cause you said you knew the answer. We had not had a discussion with uh, Chatham about going outside of the Pleasant Bay watershed. 
Uh, I know I've been trying for, I've been uh, trying for, I think uh, Joe helped me out six months to get our, uh, we're, we committed and the IMA was jammed to meet, I think twice a year uh, to talk about the agreement. And I've been unable was, uh, I guess, a COVID-19 and so on. I've also pressed Bob Duckinson to uh, talk to us. The, uh, the first thing we have to change is the agreement itself, because as you know, uh, the agreement specifies that we'll only uh, send Pleasant Bay watershed to uh, water, uh, wastewater to uh, Chatham. And so that's uh, a little bit longer discussion. The other one we need to do in the full uh, financial uh, aspect would be to look at the uh, uh, putting the pipes in the ground, so-called collection costs. They, they sometimes can be a greater cost uh, than the plant, but we do need to explore that. Uh, Foxborough, uh, we, we have discussed that somewhat at a later uh, entry. And uh, I'll turn, I'll ask Dave uh, Young if he can speak to what the Foxborough example is, Michael, that, to answer your question on that one. Yeah, that's a little bit of a misnomer. Um, when the MFN, Mansfield, Foxborough, Norton Regional Wastewater District was formed, all three towns went in at the same time. Uh, what might be a little bit confusing is that uh, all three towns were supposed to build a treatment plant back in the early 1980s and be a three town plant then. Um, Norton passed the town meeting to join. Uh, Mansfield passed the town meeting the next night. Uh, but that next night, Foxborough decided not to join. That may be what you're recalling. Um, and then Norton decided to reverse its vote, uh, reconsideration, and back down as well. Mansfield went ahead and built the treatment plant and about 10 years later signed intermunicipal agreements uh, with Mansfield, I mean with Foxborough and Norton. Um, and that's where their dissatisfied or dissatisfaction came about because they didn't have any say in the costs they were being charged. So that's why all three towns agreed. They wanted to be equal partners going in uh, as the treatment plan would be expanded in the future and therefore the MFN district was formed. So David, just to clarify, two towns walked away, but then came right back to the table before any construction began? No, 10 years later. Mansfield okay. went ahead and built the treatment plant because it was back when you were getting 90% federal dollars. All right, so back to my so back to my original point. Instead of uh, two towns building, only one town built it and two bought in later, right? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, so I think that that's an important conversation to have and at least a number that the taxpayers should have going forward. And, um, you know, kind of uh, in, in conclusion to this whole conversation, I'm not sure I like the language of the agreement. So us, us agreeing on something, the motion better be, um, I, I think Stephen worded it pretty well, um, for exploration purposes, I guess, with no guarantee. Because if the motion doesn't allude to some changes that need to be made and Harwich needs to see some numbers, then, then count me out. Because, it, and, 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 and I guess in really in closing, I, I don't think that we should be bringing large capital projects to town meeting this year, regardless. We are in the middle of a pandemic and we only had 200 people at town meeting last year. We've had no public participation or very little public participation. We have two people online tonight that have asked questions for the last 30 days and got limited answers to. And we're gonna go to town meeting. Um, we're basically gonna sprint to town meeting again with information with no education and I, th I think it's uh, I think it, I think we're heading in the same direction that we headed in for East Harwich. Okay. Larry? Uh, Michael? Larry? Yes. Can I address? Uh -huh. Oddly, this is not about VHY or what I participated in. Uh, prior to me being a selectman the second time around, I was really interested in this and I've been tracking it ever since I left office in 2006. So. I went to those subcommittee meetings with, uh, I think it was um, Peter Hughes and Angela Lamontia at one point uh, a, a representing us. And I went to one of them in Chatham and I specifically asked what Michael asked, are you saying that it could only be 
Well, why East Harwich? I would have thought that uh, there was a 100% failure down by the embayments. Uh, it's the south, the Harwich port. And the answer Bob Duncanson gave, he goes, we thought that's what you were going to ask, too. This was driven by our request uh, that we did East Harwich. He said, ultimately, you, uh, we are offering you 300,000 gallons of flow to be processed. That 300,000 could come from East Harwich, it could come from South Harwich, it can come from Harwich Port, but it is 300,000 gallons, period. And it was driven by our request. I think it's a little bit disingenuous to say that, you know, that we were controlled by Chatham in what we asked for. That was not how it shook out. Uh, Don, I was involved with that. I was just like, reading the agreement itself. I know, but I was part of the, that discussion before the agreement got codified, and I can assure you that it was driven by what capacity they were willing to offer us, not where it came from. Uh, anybody who looks at a map could easily see that Middle Street, which is where their plant was, runs parallel with 28. The logical thought for the layperson looking at that uh, executive summary would be run a pipe down 28 and send it to Harwichport so that the campgrounds and two harbors could be uh, remediated. There was some allusion to the fact that those were man-made problems because they were man-made harbors. I never got a straight answer about why we went to East Harwich. It was not because Chatham told us to. All right. Uh, yeah. So and Larry, if, if I might add, um, certainly there were, I'm sure, numerous meetings with Chatham, but every meeting I attended with Selectman Hughes uh, and you were there at some. Um, Chatham always made it clear that they were only going to accept wastewater from East Harwich because that was the watershed they shared with Harwich and they weren't interested in being a regional treatment facility. But again, I'm sure there were other meetings. Those are just the meetings I attended. Larry? If I... uh, yes, uh, Ed? If I could ask, um... Uh, I guess maybe uh, Dan, uh, in the areas in all the phases of East Harwich, um, what is the flow rate if you add all of those together? Four, hold on. So you want total phase flow? Phase one, phase two, phase whatever the phases are in East Harwich. All right, if you want to give me a second, I can go through and calculate. I believe I have it all on my spreadsheet here. Um, while, I, while I finish doing this math here on this, um, I just wanted to add another note to the conversation about surplus flow with respect to East Harwich. One of the components of the CWMP and our targeted watershed management plan is to explore potential nitrogen trading options with the other members of the Pleasant Bay Alliance. And one of the ways that we er, er, has been talked about accomplishing that is with the town of Brewster. Um, so Brewster is in quite a different situation than we are, and they don't need to sewer nearly as much. So they have to, I think, all told, I don't know the exact number of postals, but it's very small. And one of the things that has been thrown around is where we will have extra capacity, we could potentially have Brewster pay Harwich to sewer some additional properties in Harwich to offset Brewster's nitrogen load towards Pleasant Bay. So that's another option that the town of Harwich has to recoup some of the investment we've made um, through a nitrogen trading situation. Um, and for the full number right now, and, and please don't hold me uh, to the grave on this, but I have uh, 193,000 gallons per day is the 90% consumptive use for all the properties that I have water accounts for in phase two contracts one, two, three, as well as phase three. And those again were born out of the 2013 to 2019 annual total average water usage per parcel. So are there additional phases that cover East Harwich? 
Yeah, so phase eight was included in the CWMP, and Dave, if I'm misspeaking, please correct me, but my understanding was that phase eight also has a small component in East Harwich, and that's to cover if, um, you know, the implementation, the modeling, and the sampling proves that we don't meet our nitrogen removal requirements, that there's a contingent phase eight section also in East Harwich to pick that up. Yeah, so you're, you're saying we're at about roughly 190 thousand gallons right now yep with, without phase eight yep without phase eight and without any of the additional odd houses that are infilled under existing zoning i don't know if i got that last part well you're saying that's that's based on current flow but Right. Yeah. East Norwich and a lot of the areas that we've sewered, there are still a lot of vacant lots that will eventually have mm -hmm. one or be subdivided into two to four, uh, eight to two to four lots for additional houses, um, and and those will add existing, add uh, flow on it on top of what is our current rate. Right. Yeah. I, yep. Essentially yes, pushing us towards a full commitment of the 300,000 eventually. Closer to, and again, that's that's all in the growth. So you know, if in, we bring in 100,000 from Harwichport along 28 and, and, and fill up the, uh, uh, the 300,000 commitment, then as those lots get to develop, we're going to have to ship that water back west to whatever our treatment plant in west on the west side of Harwich is because we won't have capacity with Chatham. Yeah. Not really. Can I can I explain, Larry? Sure. Uh, about five minutes ago, Dan said to, it, it looks from the report that he's reading, it looks like 210,000 gallons will satisfy the removal of nitrogen from the east from East Howards in the Pleasant Bay watershed. Correct, Dan? Yes. That leaves us with ninety thousand Ed. That doesn't have anything to do with what you're talking about. So if two hundred and ten thousand removes it, and and back to our original discussion, which was six hundred and seventy-five homes were going to be sewered in in uh, phase two. That those projections are under 200,000 for the 675 homes that we said we were going to sewer and where we, where we will have run pipes um, based on contracts one, two, and three. So we're going to have excess capacity. If that report you're reading is even remotely close to accurate, we're going to have excess capacity anyway. And again, my exercise isn't really to make Dennis and Yarmouth happy. My exercise is to make the residents of the town of Harwich happy and get what we bought and what we were sold as a town by the town of Chatham. And they, and this was a, a, a multi-purpose negotiation. The town of Chatham needed us. The town of Chatham needed us to increase the flow to their plant so that they, and they kept the effluent instead of sending it back so that they could see where the effluent was going and satisfy their requirements with DEP. Now, obviously they're expanding their sewer system. But the conversation wasn't just about Harwich's ass to Chatham. It was an agreement between the two towns because both towns had a need. And we also discussed in those conversations, and David Young was there at least one of these meetings that I was at, we also discussed purchasing more capacity as they expanded their plant. So let's not forget about the fact that the town of Chatham built their plant to take a whole lot more wastewater than they are and they have knockout walls everywhere. And we had those conversations about expanding our flow if we ever needed to. Clearly that's another conversation, but my point is we haven't had it and we're floundering and we're getting ready to start another deal with another town. We're not, and we won't have satisfied our deal with, with uh, Chatham yet. Okay, I think the, the uh, only disagreement, only comment I'd make on the numbers is that uh, what Dan's been putting together are, are looking at existing water flows. And what we looked at the plant was uh, what would happen if we expanded normal, uh, even if we did it to uh, current zoning, 
so we don't uh, stop all growth with our need for you know affordable housing and other things going on. But uh, we do have questions. What I would, we've had a lot of discussion, we've had some interest, and I would still ask if at this point, is anyone, is there interest in uh, a motion as weak as it is and as expedient having as many caveats as possible so we at least can put, we can put it on the uh, uh, town meeting warrant to drive some discussion. Could I please say something before you do that? You may. Thank you. Aren't any of you selectmen curious about possibly um, hiring someone or giving Dan all the right tools to model a scenario where you actually evaluate IAs because our CWMP was an inadequate evaluation and because also the data has changed um, since that time, we would need to get updated data on IAs and we could model possibly reducing townwide flows by the implementation of IAs um, and then seeing how much flow is actually left and whether or not Chatham might be able to handle that. And the other point is that, um, what about something like Chris Wise's 100 unit project? Aren't we just, what, the situation we're describing with this excess flow just sitting there, we're just begging for that. If he files for that, how could we say no? We've opened ourselves up to that. Well, boy, I am. Uh, well, that's another discussion. I hope not, but there's nothing preventing uh, Dan from and uh, Dan from looking at I, I, IAs. I mean, he's already been doing some exploration on that. Let me. Uh, it's getting late. Could, could I please? I either uh, want to uh, entertain a motion to uh, do something with please, town please. or not. Could I uh, please? Sandy, I'd like to move on at this point, if I may. I mean, it's an important discussion. I would we live in quick. a democracy, Larry. This is a democratic form of government. If you make it really quick. Okay. So I would like to point out the Chatham uh, School Agreement, which David Young alluded to, and the very awkward agreement there. And I've talked to other people that even the sewer agreement with Chatham has become acrimonious. And I would use that as a caution to jumping into a third party body in DHY. I think that's, you know, we all saw the graph. It's $800 to the taxpayer for DHY. It's $1,000 to go it alone. So any dummy can say, hey, DHY is the right solution. But, you know, again, numbers, I have no confidence in those numbers. And uh, these type of agreements tend to get out of our control. Don Howell has pointed out that Giorgio, the lawyer, is representing the three towns. Um, maybe he could speak to that again, but uh, CDM Smith and Giorgio, the lawyer, are representing Yarmouth, Dennis, and Harwich, which, again, further undermines to me the confidence in the numbers we're dealing with and kind of the direction of the discussion. And then as far as tr uh, Dan pointed out, and I have the utmost respect for Dan, but trading nitrogen to other towns because we overbuilt um, is it, just insulting. We've got 40 plus homes that we're not even getting credit for, which I, I would love to know how that slipped through the cracks or how that went in. So that's another excess flow to Mike McCaskill's point. Those 41 homes aren't even helping us. Um, I just feel like we've got the, the, the cart in front of the horse. We can't have an adult discussion about DHY until we straighten out the chat, uh, the East Harwich situation. Thank you for uh, allowing me to speak. Okay, so we're still at a decision point. Uh, we either need to, uh, I think tonight we either need to make a, uh, entertain a, a motion to move forward or not. Decision, I think, through made. Then we will, we've decided not to move forward. Larry, moving on to yes, Larry. So, if we're not moving forward, are we interviewing? Uh, are we going to uh, then make the motion to inform Dennis and Yarmouth we're abandoning the consideration? 
And I think that's where we are because we can't drag this on. Well, in, in that case, you know, I don't, I think it, this <clears throat> this issue can, uh, requires us that I, uh, for us to continue to consider it. And if that's up until the, uh, our little meeting in front at the beginning of town meeting, so be it, but, uh, I'd make a motion that, uh, we, uh, move to have a article placed on the warrant, uh, to endorse the, uh, uh, DHY uh, agreement. Is there a second? Yeah. Um, how do we want to word uh, in order to satisfy John, John's concern and and mine? That may not have uh, been the most elegantly made motion, but yeah, the word endorse <laughs> is. You got me on that. I, I, I don't want to make a motion that we endorse. I wouldn't mind putting it on the warrant and exploring How about, it. How about, how about uh, did, did we move ahead with further discussions uh, with the towns of Yarmouth and Dennis uh, relative to the DHY agreement? Um, that leaves it pretty wide open, Don, um, as far as, you know, us. You know, I hate to, you know, I understand the concerns that everyone's expressed, but to just walk by the opportunity, I think is irresponsible. So. I agree, Steve, it's just, it, I find it equally irresponsible to the wholeheartedly endorse it. So I, I understand, I understand so so, examination so. is fine, mm -hmm. but I'm uh, pretty sure that that's gonna really upset Dennis and Yarmouth, but to Michael's point, uh, I'm not really concerned about that. Uh, uh, neither am I, I let, let them be upset, yeah. Uh, the motion I, was, I made was simply to, to put it on the warrant. Not because be if, we consider, if we consider it for another month by the, and then decide to do it, it will be past the time to put it on the warrant. If I may, Larry. Michael. I think a carefully worded motion is in order. And, and, and I would just say that uh, Stephen seems to have the same concerns I have. I think I have uh, a lot more questions, I think, than anybody. It doesn't hurt us to put a placeholder on a, on a warrant pending um, staff review and answering a lot of questions, for, for lack of a better word. But I think to Joe's point earlier and Dan's point earlier, this will give our professionals, our staff, time to, to, as Dan Pelletier said, take it apart and put it back together and show the town that it makes most sense. And, and I think in that same amount of time, just so that we're all on the same page, the questions I asked about Chatham and Senator Chatham are real questions. And they're questions that if we don't answer those questions, I, I will guarantee you, nobody else will have to stand up at town meeting and ask those questions. And, and there's a growing group of people that want these answers. And when residents ask questions, with the amount of professional staff and paid consultants we have at this point, there's no reason why we should be waiting at 30 days to do it. So I would support a carefully worded motion to place it on the warrant and instruct the staff to take it apart and put it back together and show us that it makes sense. And if it doesn't, we withdraw it before town meeting. Dan, are you okay with uh, modifying your motion to that? Sure. Are those caveats? Sure. Okay. Larry? Is there a... Yes, Don? I, I, while I agree with Michael, and I feel awkward even saying any of this because I agree with him not uh, that I'm not in any way supporting Dennis's position or Yarmouth's position, but David uh, is on the call and I want just for the record, the reason that they wanted us to make a commitment rather than what we're talking about right now is they have all respectively decided on what their flow rates are and the plant that they're planning on building is contingent on whether they've got another partner and at what level. 
uh, and that's why they're going to balk because they can't they can't come up with a solid number for their town meeting. Okay. I'm not endorsing that. I'm just telling you that's exactly where they're coming from. Yeah. Well, let, let's see how they react. Okay, so I I think we have a uh, motion uh, to place it on the town warrant if, uh, with additional study, as all the uh, comments, Michael, you have made. Uh, Joe, have you gotten those written down in the motion? Is there a uh, second to that? I'll, I'll second it. No discussion, I'll take a vote. Don? Reluctantly, aye. Okay, Michael? Uh, aye, and I will make a comment after the vote. Okay, Ed? Aye. Steve? Aye. And I'm an aye. Uh, Michael, uh, please go ahead. My comment, my comment is for the newspaper and for the public. Um, by no means am I endorsing going into DHY at this point. And as I've stated, I, I hope very clearly, we don't have the tools to make this decision. And if I'm reading the motion that was made correctly, this gives our staff and our consultants something to work towards. And, and I, would, I, would, I would ask that this gets worked towards um, it, with the utmost importance so that we're not having this conversation in our meeting before town meeting and that weeks before town meeting, we make this decision to withdraw it or move forward. And as information becomes available, let's share it and share it with the public, share it with the critics and share it with the people that may want to do this so that we can get as much public support based on a true picture as we possibly can get. So this is not an endorsement of this deal. This is asking that we get the tools to make an informed, educated decision and not a decision that was made in East Harwich. Larry, I'd like to make go one step further than Michael. I would like to get a public commitment from you that every single uh, selectman's meeting from this point forward has a wastewater uh, agenda item on it so that we can get updates and we can stay informed. I, it, just to remind everybody, I felt like really put upon about six weeks ago because it was on the agenda and I was given five minutes to explain DHY and the county wastewater management board. There's no way that could possibly be done in five minutes. Uh, you have my commitment, Don. And okay, Michael, uh, I think uh, uh, good points. We have, uh, we we'll move uh, cautiously to this issue is moving. The uh, second item we spent time on was contract three. I think we've probably uh, done enough tonight. Come back and consider yeah. that. What do you think? Larry? Yes. Uh, my only comments on contract three is based on what Dan Pelletier told us tonight and awaiting new information. It would be irresponsible for us to vote a contract three at this time or even have the discussion. It sounds Agreed. like new information has come out. We're waiting on different reports. And as much as I am a fan of finishing something before we start something else, which may weigh into my vote at town meeting and my statements at town meeting, I don't think it's proper for us to discuss going into a contract three at this time in East Harwich without all of the information Dan said has come. I fully agree. I think that's one of the aspects of this is that we do have new data. We have a chance to consider it and we'll, uh, we'll continue on. Okay. Yeah. I think we've, uh, we've covered enough. Is there Joe, any last words? Uh, just thank you for the board for, um, the, the length and the caliber and the breadth of discussion tonight. Um, I, I think I can speak for, Dan Griffin and Carol to say that it's it's helpful for us uh, for you all to get into it and uh, your vote this evening is helpful for us. We have our direction. I entertain a motion to adjourn. Move. Second. Second. Uh, roll call. Michael. Aye. Uh, I'm an aye. Uh, Don. Aye. Steve. Aye. Ed? Uh, I. Thank you all, and we'll uh, see you tomorrow night at our regular selectmen meeting. Why don't we just continue?